Hello and thanks for joining us on Consumer Confidential here on Today All Day. I'm Vicki Wynn. From finding affordable housing to battling gray hair and even new service to shuttle your teens around, we have something for everyone. But first, many of us are looking for ways to live longer and feel healthier as we age. Could the answer be found in so-called longevity clinics? They're not cheap. To see what they're like, I checked into a longevity clinic right here in Manhattan. The aging process dead in its tracks. Unlike in the movie Death Becomes Her, drinking a magic potion won't make you live forever. I'm a girl. But that doesn't mean we aren't obsessed with living longer. Even celebrities like Maria Menounos promoting the health because benefits of full body I scans to, to Hoda on Today. That you have to be the CEO of your health. Longevity medicine is the business of helping people live healthier, longer lives. Last year, it topped $26 billion in the U.S. I'm here outside the Princeton Longevity Center in Manhattan to give you a look at what happens. But first, I had to fill out an extensive health questionnaire. Everything from my eating habits to my sleeping habits to my family's medical history. And we are here bright and early today because this whole experience is gonna take about eight hours. Welcome to Princeton Longevity Center. After check-in, I'm taken to my private lounge where I'll rest between medical exams and tests. Okay, I'm told the first thing we're doing this morning is getting my vital signs. They're gonna draw some blood. They're checking my hormone levels. They're gonna look at kidney and liver function. And they're doing it all this morning so that we can get the results by this afternoon. Pretty quick turnaround. I'm getting a bone density and body scan to measure my bone strength and muscle mass. Blood draws to screen for things like genetic cancer markers, cholesterol, and vitamin deficiencies. Oh, last one already? You're on the last one. Yay. A test of my resting metabolic rate to see how many calories I burn just by existing. So when I'm resting, my body's burning a, 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 a thousand calories. Uh, around a thousand, around a thousand calories. calories. And a standard physical. Ever been told you snore? No, I don't think I snore. Dr. David Fine founded the Princeton Longevity Center in 2001 to help people optimize their health with nutrition, exercise, and medical care with the hope of living longer and better. Who makes an ideal patient? Because for some people, knowing what's coming down the road can make them more anxious and more stressed. On the one hand, that's true. On the other hand, though, you have two choices. You can find out what's going on or it can find you. Where is the sweet spot where some things may resolve on their own versus I'm going in and doing so much intervention and some of it may not be necessary. Well, you know, certainly a lot of things do resolve on their own. What we're really looking for really are more of the things that are going to be the chronic diseases of getting older. Your risk of diabetes, your risk of heart attacks and strokes, your, your cancer risk, for example. My day continues with a CT scan of my heart and body. You test down, a few more to go. Nearly three and a half hours later. Breakfast at last. A quick bite and a cardiac stress test with a sports physiologist. This is definitely aptly named stress test. Then a vision and hearing test. Next up is the ultimate athlete stress test. I thought that walking thing was hard. I think this is going to be really rough. The price you have to pay if you want to be an athlete. <laughs> what if you're just a reporter? I'm hooked up to the same machine used by Olympic athletes to measure my oxygen output and heart health. You got it. You got it. The view from the top unbeatable but after 10 minutes with the speed and incline creeping up i'm beat ah i survived it barely i get my results quickly your act, heart is acting like a 28 year old but when i meet with the nutritionist who reviewed my food logs she tells me to beef up my protein intake out of all your calories only 15 percent is coming from protein how much so should be coming should be 30 to 40. oh wow yes then i get the verdict on my overall health on the whole you're actually in really good health dr fine says the scans did find the bone density in my hips is below normal and my body fat percentage was above average at 36 percent he recommended weight-bearing exercise and strength training. It's time to pump exactly. me up. Mm. Then an unexpected result. You had a small nodule okay. over here in your left lung. It's this little guy right there. Wow, okay. Dr. Fine says it's likely a harmless lymph node, but recommended I get scanned in a year to check for growth. We don't yet have a lot of data on the experiences of people who are taking up these new services. Dan Belsky is a professor at Columbia University's Butler Aging Center. If someone doesn't have the time or frankly the money to invest in a screening like the one I underwent, what do you tell them to do? Eat a healthy diet, exercise, 
Fill your life with things that matter to you. A social network surrounding and supporting you, that can be incredibly important for building healthy longevity. If you want to try it, Belsky says, talk to your primary care doctor about the tests you want to take, research the facility and provider credentials, and avoid untested procedures that promise anti-aging effects. So the, the big question, can you tell me how long I'm going to live? You are certainly younger biologically than you are chronologically. We will get to the Smucker's Jar. And as a result of my visit, I've actually changed a lot of my habits. I've purchased a weighted vest. It's six pounds. I wear it when I walk to help increase the bone density in my hips. I've also upped my protein take by adding things like fish, turkey jerky, and protein shakes to my weekly meals. But again, these clinics, they're not cheap. My visit cost about $5,000. Some of these longevity clinics offer services throughout the entire year though. That can go for $60,000 or more. A lot of it is not covered by insurance, so always ask ahead of time. Now we turn to another hot topic, anti-gray hair products. According to Advanced Dermatology, 30% of Americans say they spend the most money on their hair color. It can be tempting to try a product that promises to reduce or delay gray hair, but do they really work? Call it 50 shades of anti-gray. One of the hottest hair care trends for those looking to hold back the hands of time. I recently found this gray hair treatment. We're hoping for the best. It's supposed to go deep into the scalp to the bulb and restore the hair color. All you have to do is target your gray areas. Some sharing their experience on social media, trying popular serums and supplements, promising to delay the gray. This is what it looks like. I'm also not ready. Just apply it kind of in lines. For any salt with my pepper. Feels nice. If anything, I'm at least getting a scalp massage. With 6 to 23% of the world's population showing at least 50% gray hair coverage by age 50, in the past year, search interest in anti-gray hair serum climbing 280% in the U.S. alone. We just have to kind of accept some facts of life, and gray hair is one of them. Dr. Mona Gohara is a board-certified dermatologist. What causes gray hair? We're all born with a certain number of hair follicles and a predetermined number of hair follicle cycles. There are little pigment producing factories in our hair follicles called melanocytes that give us our hair color. Sometimes the melanocytes get tired, they just don't wanna work anymore. And that's when our hair turns gray. She says anti-gray products aim to stimulate those melanocytes. Do they work? Can I make a joke and say it's kind of in the gray zone? <laughs> Whether the melanocytes are actually nudged is questionable. I don't know that we have any definitive science to say that that's actually happening. One well-known plant-based serum containing ingredients like caffeine, peptides, and vitamins promises to deliver real, visible results in as soon as 90 days. According to its website, the company behind the serum bases the statement on a three-month clinical study of 15 participants, of which 64% reported seeing less gray hair. For best results, the brand also recommends using its Gray Delay Supplement, a blend of vitamins, antioxidants, minerals, and botanicals, described as ideal for those with little to no gray hair. While the Food and Drug Administration does not review anti-gray hair products for safety before they hit the market, Gohara considers them low risk for side effects, which could include irritation from serums or gastrointestinal issues with supplements. They're pretty safe, and that's why I think it's okay to try it on a small area. But she says check with your doctor before trying them. While prices vary per product, serum and supplement combos can cost $70 to $140, with most brands offering a discounted price when you sign up for a monthly subscription. Gohara says before spending your money, look to the root of the problem. It is 100% about our genetics. Now, there are other things that can give us gray hair, Vicky. There are some- Like my kids. That, yeah, oh, definitely. Your teenagers. <laughs> In a statement to NBC News, Vegamore says their serum helps reduce the appearance of grays on new hair growth, and their supplement helps preserve the hair's natural pigment and delays grays. All right, coming up, think twice before posting photos online. The unintended consequences of a photo post.
we are back with a warning about photo fakes. As more of us rely on online connections professionally and personally, how do you know who you're really talking to? Is that profile picture the real person? It's a problem that's becoming more common. Here are the red flags you need to watch for. How many of you have been threatened by someone who's upset thinking they know you? All of you. They're young, they're good looking, and they're on social media. Kayla, Cammie, Tristan, and Justin say scammers have stolen their images to create fake online profiles and then use those profiles to lure people into online relationships, grooming them into sending money. I had a family contact me and they wanted me to inform their grandfather like that it wasn't me that he was talking to. Is this something you have to deal with every day? Yeah, 100%. All say their photos now live on hundreds, even thousands of fake social media profiles, many times using their real names. I've actually been contacted by like the FBI, NCIS, basically confirming that I'm not behind all of this. These women, they spend thousands of dollars thinking I'm gonna come see them. Justin says he saw a post online, a woman celebrating her engagement to him. He messaged her and warned her husband-to-be wasn't real. Then the scammer saw Justin's comment. The scammer calls me and he's like, you're messing with my business. And I'm like, it's my face. This is not your business. Justin recorded the call. Oh, everybody but this poor girl, right? What did you say? Well, no. Tristan, a fitness coach, says some women who thought they were having an online relationship with him even hired him for in-person training. They just want to confirm that it's actually me, and then they'll just waste my time. Cybercrime continues to rise in America. Last year, reports of romance scams alone amounted to a reported loss of $1.3 billion. Among the top lies used to ask for money, someone close is sick, hurt, or in jail, and I am in the military. Three of these four have served or are serving. I think that military personnel are targeted because you can use the excuse because of security concerns. I can't send you a picture right now. I'm not allowed to video chat. California-based Social Catfish is a people search engine that focuses on online safety. Their search results help customers find and remove fake profiles. The internet's still the wild, wild west. There are very few laws to protect you online for the use of your images. CEO David McClellan says these stolen images can lead to very real danger. I had people actually showing up and, you know, getting getting upset with me in person. And it's even happened to me. Vicky, we decided to run your image and here's what we found. We found a Vicky Wynn channel selling for $799. We also found a clubhouse link of somebody actually using your image to most likely talk to other people online. And we found a celebrity foot website that has all your feet pics. My feet? That is gross and weird. McClellan says you can take steps to protect your images. Set your social media profiles to private. Limit what you post, add watermarks to your photos, and run reverse image searches. It's free with Google Images. If you can't meet the person within like a week, it's not real. By the way, those websites that were found with my pictures, Social Catfish has helped me take those down. And a few good reminders, never send money to someone you haven't met. Anytime someone online asks you for money, stop contact with them immediately and report that to the FTC. Artificial intelligence technology is also making it easier for scammers. A simple phone call is all it takes to extort money. The FBI says on average, victims of schemes using new voice technology lose about $11,000 each and recently scams have reached a new level with AI clones that look and sound like real celebrities spreading fake messages online. Today we are launching an investment project. That From Elon Musk pitching an investment opportunity to Gail King promoting a weight loss product. Follow the link right now and learn more about my secret. It seems fake ads made with AI are everywhere. Even Tom Hanks has found himself an unwilling spokesperson, warning his Instagram followers, there's a video out there promoting some dental plan with an AI version of me. I have nothing to do with it. While celebrity endorsement scams are nothing new, in the age of AI, these deceitful deep fakes are becoming more convincing, fooling those who buy into them. 
The FBI says last year victims lost a record $10.2 billion to scams and other online crimes. With just a few seconds of audio, new artificial intelligence software can clone a person's voice. As an actor, I pretend for a living. As an actor, I pretend for a living. And a scammer can make it say anything. The Federal Trade Commission issuing a recent warning that voice cloning technology is making family emergency scams more convincing. Earlier this year, several Oregon school districts warned parents about a spate of fake kidnapping calls. A recent global survey showed one in four people saying they've experienced an AI voice cloning scam or knew someone who had. I got a phone call from an unknown number and so I pick up the phone and I say hello and my daughter Brianna says mom and she's crying and sobbing. Jennifer DeStefano says she was convinced her 15-year-old daughter Brianna had been kidnapped. And uh, she says, mom, these bad men have me. Help me, help me, help me. She fades off as man takes over the phone and says, Listen here, I've got your daughter. She says the scammer threatened to harm her daughter unless she sent him a million dollars. How much did it sound like your daughter? It sounded, I never doubted it was her. I, I had a full conversation with her. It was the way she cries, it was the way she sobs, it was the way she would respond to me. Jennifer was able to connect with her husband who confirmed Brianna was safe. After warning her friends and neighbors, Jennifer says she's heard of similar incidents. Whether it was a kidnapping, whether it was an accident, you know, they were in jail, all these different types of scenarios. We're going to have a completely new group of scammers and threat actors. Wasim Khalid is CEO and co-founder of Blackbird AI. I saw that in some of these voice cloning programs are as cheap as $5 a month, and you can take someone's voice off of a social media video, use AI, and make that voice say whatever you want it to do. Is that really happening? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's basically the, the revolution in AI over the last six months. The key takeaway here is generative AI is going to be the catalyst to drive misinformation, disinformation, and warped realities further and faster than we've ever seen before. He says if you get a suspicious call about a family emergency, first authenticate the person by having them confirm information only you two would know. Have a private safe word for your family and have someone else call your loved one's actual phone number. Because with AI, what you see and hear is not always what you get. Up next, a new Uber feature that allows teens to order their own rides. Consumer Confidential continues right after the break.
popular rideshare Uber has a new feature that could make things a lot easier for busy parents. Have you ever had a child stuck at school while you're at work and unable to pick them up? Introducing Uber for teens. <laughs> Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to what we're sure will be our greatest year at Rydell. As classic as the movie Grease, so is the ritual of returning to class. And with it comes hectic teen schedules. School, sports practice, band, even going to the mall. Solving the riddle of all those rides can be worse than a wordle. I should know, my own teenage daughter Emerson is as busy as ever. So we're trying out Uber for Teens. It's a new service that allows teens to order their own rides. It starts here on my phone in the Uber app. Teens can actually create an account on their own. A parent or guardian has to invite them. So you go to your Uber app, hit account, and then family and teens right there, invite family, and there it is, add a teen. The app, designed for teens 13 to 17, sends Emerson an invite, and from there, she creates her own teen account after reading a safety tutorial. Uber says parents should talk to their teens before they use the service, remind them to check the license plate, ask the driver who they're picking up before getting in, and never sit in the front seat. I'm ordering my ride now. Oh, here I am at work and I just got a text. Yep, it's a notification. It says Emerson just requested a ride and the driver is arriving in four minutes. The car pulls up. Hey, how are you? Who are you here for? Um, Emerson. Yep, yeah, all right. But the driver can't start the ride without a personal identification number or PIN from Emerson's app to ensure she's in the right car. We will have uh, one uh, PIN for me. The PIN is 6255. She's on her way while I follow along from my office. It shows me Emerson's been picked up and it shows me she'll be dropped off in seven minutes. I can even call the driver to check in. Is Emerson in the car with you? Yes, ma'am. She is here. Great. Is everything going okay? Everything perfect, ma'am. Just perfect. Hey, Emerson, are you there? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, cool. Everything's good on your end? Going great. Uber says drivers with teen passengers can't change drop-off locations, and if the drive goes off course or stops for extended periods of time, Uber will call the driver and teen, and if necessary, 911. Uber Vice President Sachin Kansal notes the safety features are mandatory and cannot be turned off. Our kids are very precious cargo. For parents, the most important thing was visibility and tracking. Can any driver drive teens or do they have to go through a vetting process? They have to be an experienced driver on our platform and they have to be positively rated throughout. In addition, Uber says it conducts criminal background checks and reviews driving records every year, providing a new option for busy parents just in time for the start of school. Thanks for the ride. We also tried the new Uber Eats feature for teens multiple times, but we did experience a few glitches from not getting notifications to receiving the wrong order. Uber tells us that this feature is still being tested and developed. Coming up, the latest housing trend, what to know about build to rent communities that are popping up across the country.
Imagine living in a three or four bedroom home, two car garage and a backyard without all the responsibilities of home ownership. Introducing build to rent communities, entire neighborhoods of single family homes built just for renting. They're popping up across the country and they're already helping to alleviate the national housing shortage. The American dream isn't for sale, it's for rent in this community near Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome to Harmony Heights, 153 and four bedroom single family homes, all brand new and part of the build to rent trend. Renters enjoy modern appliances and luxury finishes, spacious closets and smart home technology. An app allows them to request fixes. Their monthly rent and a small fee cover all maintenance and landscaping. Think of an apartment complex, except you break it down into single family homes. Richard Ross is CEO of Quinn Residences. Who is renting these homes? A third of our residents are people who can't come up with a down payment. They can't afford seven, seven and a half percent mortgage today. But two thirds of our residents are residents by choice, meaning they elect to rent. While the median sales price for existing homes has dropped nearly 2% from last year, a recent report shows renting as more cost effective than home ownership in 95% of the U.S. right now. Here in the United States, there are almost a thousand of these build to rent communities with single family detached homes. More than 500 are in the works. Each community has 50 or more homes renting for an average of $2,000 a month. I never even heard of a community that was strictly a rental community. So I was pretty intrigued by it. Luke and Rebecca Montgomery spent a year looking to buy a home, but struggled to find anything within their price range and big enough for their family. Then they found this neighborhood on Zillow. This is not the time to buy or, or build. We would rather wait it out a little bit and see what happens. So this was just the right solution for us. How nice is it to have the benefits of home ownership without the responsibility. It's nice to be able to know that in the event something happens, it's not all going to fall on your shoulders. I can find myself very bored. I don't have to cut the grass. Empty nesters Marco and Myra Martinez says the low maintenance lifestyle gives them more time to enjoy the things they love. I love to hear the birds uh, singing and to see the trees uh, behind my house. It's beautiful. A career change prompting their move from Texas. The couple says instead of buying, they decided to rent so they could see if they liked the area first. This community offered us a, a great opportunity to rent a house where we feel safe. You don't have to own all the time. I mean, you can make the decision of renting and, and, and thinking about it. And sometimes that's better than just uh, owning. You can use an online calculator like one of these to see if it makes sense for you to rent or buy in a particular location. People are taking a different path to home ownership. David Howard, CEO of the National Rental Home Council, says Build to Rent provides an innovative way to introduce supply into the housing market, which is an estimated 6 million homes short. What does it mean when it comes to affordability? It is almost $1,000 less expensive on average to rent a single family home than to make a mortgage payment on a single family home. When considering Build to Rent, experts say do your homework. Look for reputable developers. You can search those affiliated with the National Rental Home Council at buildforrenthomes.com. Also, think about location and if the community matches your family's lifestyle. Tips to help you lay the foundation for your version of the American dream. That is our time for now. Be sure to join me for another edition of Consumer Confidential. For all of us at NBC News, I'm Vicki Wynn. Chocolate. It's a perfect combination of bitter, sweet, creamy, and rich. For many, chocolate isn't just a treat, it's a sensory escape. I'm Elena Besser. I'm a professional chef, recipe developer, content creator, and chocoholic. So I'm heading out to meet two women innovating the chocolate industry and turning an everyday luxury into something truly extraordinary. Sometimes when I go into the farm with my clippers and I talk to the trees, I notice every detail in the tree, the flower, the color. Yadira Vasquez is the owner of Hacienda Chocolat. This cacao farm sits next to the El Yunque Rainforest in Puerto Rico. What a beautiful place Thank you've got you. here. 
I met Yadira to learn how an ancient tropical fruit from the Amazon blossomed into a $100 billion global industry. There's so many aromas and flavors that you can experience in a chocolate bar. People have been eating cacao for over 5,000 years. Turning this fruit into chocolate was perfected by the Mayans and Aztecs. They're credited with the process of refining cacao into a frothy chocolate beverage. After the brutal Spanish conquest of the Aztecs, the drink was brought to Europe. Due to soaring demand across the continent, by the late 1800s, chocolate production had moved to Africa, where labor was essentially free. Today, 60% of the world's chocolate is grown on the Ivory Coast. Initially, the Spanish also tried to establish plantations in Puerto Rico, but they failed due to hurricanes. For centuries, leftover cacao species flourished on the island in the wild. In the late 1980s, amid fears of a global cacao shortage, the U.S. Department of Agriculture began researching these trees to find a variety that could produce more pods. The results came out that at least 10 were very good for Puerto Rico and our climate, and they were chosen for their productivity, resistance to disease, and flavor. At that time, Yadira was in medical school studying radiology. She opened her own clinic while raising three young children. But a breast cancer diagnosis in 2005 changed everything. As a doctor, I diagnosed myself. So it's, it's very scary because you're a doctor and you know exactly what it means. Yadira made several life changes to focus on recovery. She bought a few acres of undeveloped farmland to meditate, relax, and reconnect with her love of gardening. I think that uh, once you connect to nature, everything in your emotional body starts to heal. She began growing various tropical fruit trees, including cacao. And I started experimenting. I thought, I have pots, now I have to make chocolate. In 2014, Yadira won a grant from the USDA and Chocolate Cortez, one of the Caribbean's biggest producers, to bring cacao farming back to Puerto Rico. She purchased more trees and was able to expand her operation. Well, initially when I got this farm, it was a forest. So we have trees here that are probably more than 50, 60 years old. Wow. Our it's trails go around those trees. Within three years, her first crop was ready, but tragedy struck. Swaths of Puerto Rico, underwater, roofs ripped off, trees toppled. We've had other hurricanes in Puerto Rico, but Maria was unreal. I still look at the pictures today, and it's been, what, six years? And I feel like crying. It took two years to rebuild the farm. Actually, we do have trees that fell, and, and new branches came up, and we just left them there because they're so productive. So that's one thing I love about the tree. It's very resilient, it's very strong. I think I, I get very identified with the tree mm -hmm. because I feel like we're the same. Yeah, you're but, strong yeah. and you're resilient. A decade after her farm journey began, Yadira was able to start selling raw beans. Within a year, a special batch was entered into the Coco of Excellence Awards in Italy. I had sold those beans to Cortez, so they call me and they go like, you should send these beans, they're really good. Those beans won Yadira the Silver Award in 2021. Inspired to do more, she built her own facility to process chocolate. I might have the same tree in a different farm and the soil and the climate is going to be different and there's no way you're going to taste the similar thing any other place. Her dedication has led to two more Cocoa of Excellence Awards for beans and bars. When you see your name as in the Chocolate Puerto Rico among excellent other chocolate makers from all around the world, my heart just bursts. Yadira is passionate about sharing her love for cacao. Today, she makes most of her money from tourism. What do you hope the tourists walk away from coming to the farm with? Well, they learn what real chocolate is <laughs> and where it comes from. When they go, they go like, we never thought chocolate was so difficult. It helps them savor it more.
The farm tour at Hacienda Chocolat is a stunning hike featuring some of Yadira's favorite plants like ginger and vanilla. But I was here for the cacao, which is incredibly difficult to grow. These trees only thrive near the equator and they need lots of water. We have multiple showers during the day, so we don't need any irrigation for the trees. They get exactly what they need. The cacao trees here are from different parts of South and Central America, all with different flavors and aromas. When we're eating the chocolate bar itself, do you use a mixture of the pods? How does it work? It's a blend of all the different varieties we have here. The cacao fruit starts as a small flower that can only be pollinated by a midge fly. It opens in the morning. The midge has 24 hours to do his work. And then if it does get pollinized, you can see, I have to come closer here. You're gonna see a very tiny cacao back here. See? Oh my this gosh. <gasps> so that's, that's crazy. The baby cacao. I am shook by how oh. tiny and cute that is. Cacao pods must be harvested by hand. So Yadira put me to work. This is beautiful. So we've picked about a dozen pods. How much chocolate does this make? Well, we almost have one pound of chocolate. And one pound of chocolate should give us at least 10 to 12 chocolate bars. I have a whole new appreciation for chocolate. I've, I already really appreciated chocolate. I just want to make that clear. Mm -hmm. But having this context, I appreciate it even yes. more. <laughs> Time to taste the literal fruits of my labor. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. It's so slimy. You're just going to suck. You're not going to bite or I just suck swallow. on it. Yes. It's, it tastes kind of like a mango. Exactly. It, it tastes more like tropical fruits. Mm -hmm. can be mango. Some people say pineapple. After they're picked, the pods head to the processing facility. The first step is fermentation. Wooden boxes are lined with banana leaves, then filled with the beans, which ferment for up to 10 days. Yes. That's insane. The so smell is almost like big kombucha. They're air dried for about a week. So tell me why you've decided to dry them in the sun rather than using machinery. It preserves much more of the flavor. Most chocolate farmers sell their beans after fermentation. Of the roughly 6 million cacao farms around the world, only a couple hundred make their own bars commercially. That's because processing the dried beans requires expensive equipment. A special oven roasts the beans to bring out a nutty, rich flavor. We do low roast and we want to preserve the floral and the fruity notes. The beans are cracked into cacao nibs, then crushed and ground into a creamy paste known as chocolate liquor. Depending on the type of chocolate being made, cocoa butter, sugar, and milk can be added. The mixture is cooled into large blocks and aged for up to two weeks. To make a bar, the block is melted back into syrup. And the tempering process is what gives it that sexy sheen, right? Exactly, and the snappiness. The chocolate is then poured into plastic molds and refrigerated to harden. After all that work, I was ready to finally taste Yadira's award-winning chocolate.
Enjoying chocolate in different ways is an essential part of the tour at Hacienda Chocolat. Yadira starts with a sip of history. First, cacao nibs are added to a warm matate, a traditional device used by the Mayans and Aztecs to make hot chocolate. You're using the force, your weight mm -hmm. on the stones. Do you want me to get in there and help yeah. out? It, it almost feels like I'm grinding rocks. <laughs> <laughs> except the aroma makes it all oh, worth it. Yes. Yadira adds peppers just like the Mayans did. After 20 minutes of grinding, the cacao starts to lighten. I thought I was nearly done. Okay. How much longer should I be doing this? Like two more hours. Okay, great, let's go. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yadira finishes the drink by mixing the cacao paste with water. To make it foamy, she uses a molinillo, a Mexican wooden whisk. The foam was said to be the spirit of the cacao. Okay. So, and it would connect the drinker of the chocolate with the gods. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Wow, this is unlike any hot chocolate I've ever had. It's definitely leaning more in the savory side of things, but I'm kind of obsessed. Time to taste the chocolate bars with a boozy twist. Not only is Yadira a chocolate expert, but she's deeply passionate about spirits. Tour goers can enjoy a chocolate pairing with a variety of spirits, including a Puerto Rican favorite locally crafted rum. The rum and the chocolate will give us a greater sensory experience than the separate ingredients. We try to choose like things that are grown in the same place. What grows together goes together. So in this case, the sugar cane is a tropical plant and the cacao tree is a tropical tree. Yadira pairs a three-year-old Añejo with her award-winning white chocolate bar topped with cacao and coffee nibs. White chocolate is pretty controversial. What makes yours special? This is a white chocolate where the powder milk has gone to the oven and it's caramelized. Just place the chocolate okay, in great. your mouth and just let it melt a little bit. You have to Whoa. bite the nibs. Mm -hmm. I'll put it in. It's a dangerous combination, my friend. The second rum, aged in a bourbon barrel, is paired with 70% dark chocolate. I feel like it's more fruity and it's a little bit more mellowed out. I'd say this is the perfect pair for someone that thinks they don't love dark chocolate. Exactly. Trying these together makes it more approachable. Like nothing I've ever tasted before, Yadira's chocolate is a love letter to the El Yunque rainforest. Every bite has a complex blend of floral and fruity notes imparted from the surrounding flora. Through her hands-on process, Yadira celebrates the land on which this cacao is grown. What do you love the most about this? Here in the forest and in the plantation, I feel like it's my real home. The scientific name is Theobroma cacao. That means a Theo is God and Broma is food, so it's the food of the gods. I think it is a, a gift of nature to the humans. And uh, there's so many things we can do with chocolate and culinary and recipes, so it is the food of the gods. Yes, <laughs> cheers to that and cheers to chocolate. <laughs> Next up, I head back to New York to meet a pastry chef turning chocolate into edible art.
fresh cacao turned into chocolate only whet my appetite for more. I couldn't wait to get back to New York to meet one chef designing show-stopping confections. I'm drawn to the incredible versatility and endless possibilities of chocolate. I get to express my love for flavors, colors, design, and artwork. Susanna Yoon is the founder and head chef of Stick With Me Sweets in New York City. How are you? It's so nice to meet you. She's best known for her handmade bonbons. They're truly a treat for all the senses. With over 20 gorgeous and uniquely flavored varieties to choose from, I couldn't wait to see what sweet surprises Susanna had in store. I am shook by how stunning these are. <laughs> Pieces of jewelry that you get to eat. Yes. So I have a few. I have in mind for you to try. Okay. The matcha, black sesame, calamansi marine pie. I almost don't want to eat it, it's so pretty. <laughs> if you take a bite, you can look inside and see the layers. It looks like a tiny key lime pie. And now, the moment we've been waiting for. It's our black sesame with mango and passion fruit jam on top. So pretty. This flavor was inspired by roasting black sesame seeds with my grandmother. Susanna, the daughter of Korean immigrants, was born and raised in Seattle. With two working parents, her grandmother was an integral part of her upbringing and one of her biggest inspirations when it comes to food. I remember my grandmother's favorite line was, have you eaten yet? I would just watch her hands move so gracefully as she prepared each dish. And the aromas in the house were always so captivating. What were some of your grandma's philosophies when it came to food? It's about variety. Her table was set up with so many different little dishes. Would you say that your grandmother's love language was gift giving? Absolutely. It was cooking, feeding people, and giving people her, her delicious treats that she would make. And that's what you do here, which is so cool. Yes. <laughs> How the heck did you end up in New York? The day my grandmother passed away, I felt like I had lost a part of my heart. And I was actually not in the culinary world, but it was in that moment I vowed to my grandmother that I wanted to be more like her and bring joy to people through food. Did you always have a passion for dessert? Yes. I ate chocolates every day. I don't even know why my dad allowed me to do that. Susanna's passion for sweets took her to the pastry program at the International Culinary Center in New York City. After graduation, she landed a coveted job at the renowned French eatery, Café Balloud. What was it like breaking into the industry as a woman who pivoted her career? It was marked by a lot of fear and some excitement. I was pretty quiet and reserved, but after working just like a few days in the kitchen, I quickly realized the need to be more vocal and assertive. Susanna then honed her skills at Thomas Keller's Michelin starred per se, developing an eye for precision. Talking or even smiling was not really encouraged. The kitchen was really quiet. Everyone was super focused. In those high intensity environments, how did you keep your head held high? I didn't. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't keep my, <laughs> my head was always down. I was always working. It was just really mentally and physically demanding. But working 15 hour days didn't deter Susanna. Her ultimate goal was to be her own boss. In 2014, she opened her own shop, a cozy Nolita store called Stick With Me. Her mission, to provide memorable gifting moments with elegant bites just like her grandmother. I feel like beautiful and delicious chocolate should be available for all of life's special moments. Originally, all production and sales were run out of the Nolita store. But during the pandemic, when many food businesses faced closure, Susanna's online sales spiked. Susanna opened her Brooklyn factory two years ago. When she started out, Susanna sold about 15,000 boxes a year. Today, they're on track to sell 70,000. Some people may not know that you have a second location. Yes. And it's in Korea. Yes. I really wanted to reconnect with my heritage and be able to share a new chocolate experience from New York City with Seoul, Korea. These views are crazy. 
At her factory, Susanna believes that to do their best work, her staff needs to feel their best. I wanted a positive space for my staff. If you want to like brainstorm some fun and creative ideas, you need to feel good every you day. Do. Even the industrial kitchen is laid out with shorter frames in mind. I basically built the kitchen so that I could reach everything. It's more built for female chefs. Susanna's staff, which happens to be all women, appreciates the environment fostered by their boss. She always wants us to have a good work-life balance. I would never really want to ask off for any other like places that I've worked at before. Right? Yeah, but I think definitely whatever you value is super important for. Susanna also provides regular training sessions so employees can keep enhancing their skills. No longer confined by someone else's rules, Susanna can let her imagination run wild. The lighter color, milk chocolate, darker color, dark chocolate, and white chocolate. Those were the three colors I got to use when I was working at Per Se. And so when I left, I wanted to make it more colorful, more vibrant. That vibrancy is exactly why her bonbons have received plenty of accolades. Even Oprah is a fan. Like any artist, Susanna and her team follow a painstaking process to create each bonbon. And it starts with the finest ingredients from around the world. We have to make a lot of orders from different places and different farms to get the perfect ingredients that we need. Vanilla beans sourced from Tahiti give confections a more floral flavor. Matcha is hand carried from Japan and buttery Elliott pecans are shipped right from Georgia. It can take up to two days to make a batch of these intricate bonbons. I know this is cheesy, but I feel like a kid in a candy <laughs> store, Susanna. I couldn't wait to put my bonbon making skills to the test with one of the shop's best sellers. So we're gonna make the pecan pie bonbon. Each bonbon is decorated by hand. Susanna starts the process by splatter painting the mold. So we're gonna make it rain. Okay, let's make it rain. <laughs> All right. So I like to put my arms up a little bit higher and then just let it gently drop. Next, it's onto the tempering machine where Susanna creates the silky smooth chocolate shell. So the goal is to make sure that the chocolate's inside the mold and not outside the mold. Okay. We're gonna turn on the vibrating table. It's gonna help us get all the air bubbles out. When you see it looks good, we're, it's time to create the perfect shell. Take a peek, make sure it's perfect, keep it level. Okay, I'm really nervous, but we're gonna crush it. Ah, and then stop. All right, hold on. You got it, you got it. And the sides. Guys, this is <laughs> crazy. Sensitive to temperature, humidity, and time, chocolate can be very difficult to work with. Many professional chefs, myself included, struggle to master this sweet. Susanna's chocolatiers work with her for months to learn each step in the bonbon making process. After the shells cool and set, it's time to pipe the layers of flavor. First up, a sea salt caramel. When you pipe, it's almost like a clock. Let's see if I can handle this. I can handle it. You can, you can do it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, next step is filling it with our golden candy pecans. All right, we made a pecan praline, and now we're gonna pipe this in. Okay, great. Okay, wish me luck. Oh, man. What would you say the most important step in the process is? Every step <laughs> is the most important step in the process. Speaking like a Michelin pastry chef <laughs> over here, my friend. The filled bonbons refrigerate to set. And then it's time for the final step. A double seal of chocolate creates a perfect uniform shell. Wow. After a final rest in the climate controlled chocolate room, it's time for the big reveal. Okay, I'm so okay. excited. Oh, there's one stubborn one. one. There Two. she is. They turned out gorgeous. Yes. These are so beautiful. How about we taste all of our hard work? Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. 
wow. It's just so <laughs> texturally satisfying. <laughs> After a hard day of making and tasting chocolates, I join Susanna's team for what they call family meal. The ladies gather once a week to celebrate their successes and relish in their fierce female workforce. I think there's a lot of kindness here. We all want to hear what the other ones have to say. What's the best piece of advice that uh, Chef Suzanne has given you? Really focus on like your mental health so that when you come to work, you can be the best that you can be. I could never show up to a dinner party empty-handed. So I put my own spin on one of Susanna's beloved bonbons, the black sesame, inspired by her grandmother. It was so good. You like it? So good, yeah. Creating special memories with food is definitely something I'm all about. It's that legacy of giving that continues to inspire Susanna. What do you think your grandmother would think of this place? She was always proud of me. I would bring her a cup of water and she would say, oh my God, this water that you brought for me tastes like honey. <laughs> and so I know that she would be looking down and um, feeling really happy about what I built here. I think we can all agree that chocolate is good for the soul. My sweet tooth is certainly satisfied, but it's these ladies behind the bean who are making a lasting impression and taking chocolate to new heights. From Puerto Rico to right here in New York City, the women of the chocolate world know what it means to break the mold. We are back with today's checklist, and this morning we are, uh, we are going to help take help you take charge of your health by talking food, breaking down the nutrients that you need right now and in the right amounts also. So joining us this morning is Vanessa Rosetto, registered dietitian and CEO of Kulina Health. Good morning, Vanessa. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. It's so nice to have you Thanks here. Thanks for having me. And I think it's so important, um, you know, when we talk about all this stuff, it's like you think, oh, this is good for you, but how much are you supposed to be taking in and is it different for men and women? So we're going to start today with fiber. Yeah, so this is one that is actually, there are differences for men and women. So men should have about 35 grams and women okay. about 28 grams. But when I say, hey, get 28 grams of fiber, you're like, cool, where? What does that even How? mean? How, exactly. Yes. And you know, fiber is good for gut health, it's good for weight management. And so easy ways for me, I always think like more bang for my buck. Okay. So two grams of, uh, two tablespoons of chia are 11 grams of fiber. Oh, so you add that, them into add that to your oats, which are mm -hmm. four grams, right? And so now we're at 15. Then we're gonna have- and this stuff all has fiber too? All has fiber. Dark chocolate? Dark chocolate and... blows everyone's mind, 85% or over yeah. has about three or four grams of fiber. Take a little piece of that. Right? Yeah. Uh, and also, you know. Wow, that is the hardest dark chocolate <laughs> I've ever had. Also, okay. one cup of raspberries mm -hmm. is eight grams of fiber. Okay. So, you know, if you want to just like add something extra to your oats, just toss it in. It's the easiest exactly, way to do it. Exactly. Pistachios, edamame, all Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. All right, let's fiber. talk about vegetables. Can't talk, it, we can't do this segment without vegetables. You need vegetables. Right? Everyone needs While them. I chump on my dark yes. chocolate. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How much? So I like to say one cup of vegetables at lunch and dinner. Doesn't have to be roasted broccoli mm -hmm. or, you know, roasted edamame. One, right. We can just cut up carrots, right. cut up celery, cut up red bell peppers. Is raw best? Depends on yeah. what's good, what your stomach can take. Yeah. So yeah, if you can tolerate raw vegetables, that's awesome. If you want to cook them down because that's a little bit easier for mm -hmm. you, that's okay too. Right. But it doesn't have to be, you know, shaved Parmesan and olive oil and roasted for 30 minutes. It's just cut them up, put them on the side, keep it going. You could even munch in those in the, during the day, that's right? That's right, that's yeah. right. Yep. For those people who do that whole all day exactly. eating thing. Exactly, and you can add some cheese with it <laughs> yeah. to help you, okay. make, help you get full, so all it's right. really great. So here's the next thing. Right, I see so many people in this building who walk around yes. with these things of water yes. this big. Yes, and good that, for them. Right. <laughs> If they, if, they, if they don't get to the bottom, they feel like it's they're a failure. <laughs> yeah. How much water? 90 ounces? <laughs> yeah, so I'm looking for 90 ounces a day, which could be a little bit difficult, but many of us are working at home, so we have easy access to a restroom if you need. Good point. <laughs> Sometimes that bothers people. But actually, some quick ways for you to get hydration in, you can just add a pinch of Himalayan sea salt. That helps with electrolytes and helps to keep you feeling really? more hydrated. Yep. Himalayan so sea salt? Himalayan sea salt, okay. yeah, so you don't have to worry too too much right. about you know the 90 ounces if it's a little bit taxing. Well, that's kind of the good salt. Let's talk about the not so good salt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's funny because the thing is, it's not just table salt. There's 
sodium in so many of our products. Sodium is everywhere. Yeah. Um, and if you have some issues with blood pressure or things like that, you want to pay attention. So the American Heart Association recommends one teaspoon, about 2,300 milligrams. Mm -hmm. Salt is hidden everywhere. So a day? A day. A teaspoon a day? And so here's the thing. Most people eat fresh food, right? Yeah. And so if you are eating canned soups, you want to look for things that are low sodium. You yeah. can also get low sodium cold cuts. Yeah. It's just being mindful of those words so that you don't overdo it. All right. Since we're talking about goals in 2023, healthy eating, all of this, this is where I mess up. Snacks. So my snacks aren't right. I already know. Well, <laughs> you got to get your snacks yeah, my lined snacks up right. Just, well, I got to get it in order. Well, what happens is people are looking for snacks that are already processed and yummy. Packaged, and yummy. No, yes, I'm always looking for things. If it's not delicious, we're not eating it. Right, right. And so sometimes you'll get a bar, and the bar will be 300 calories. And maybe that might be a little bit over. Mm -hmm. So you could do the dark chocolate with 15 almonds. So okay. there's fiber, and there's protein, and there's fat. That's not bad. It's going to hold you over. So I'm always looking for more than 150 calories, but no more than 200. So between 150 and 200. Yeah. Is and this where I'm supposed to live? This, or? Is, this is where you can is live. Is this home? Yeah, this is home. So okay. And so here's a fun <laughs> way, because eggs maybe by themselves are a little bit boring. Just a little. So we can add a little hot sauce. We can add everything but the bagel seasoning. Okay. It's very delicious. But also, we can always go back to the dark chocolate okay. and the almonds for something fun. Oh, I can do that. Yeah. Welcome See? to my home, Harry. That's right. That's right. <laughs> How's that not Doritos. Yeah. Oh, no. No, no. Eggs. And eggs. Mm, Vanessa, yum. That was great. Thank, Thank you, you, Vanessa. So much. Another edition of Superfood Friday SOS. This is where we answer your questions. And to do it, we brought in the expert today, nutrition and health expert Joy Bowers here to break them down, to share some helpful, healthy eating strategies. Okay. Always good to have you. Let's dig in. Here's our first question from a viewer. Hi, Joy. I'm Ina Espinoza from Ann Arbor, Michigan. How much protein should I be eating? Oh, good question. Yeah. yeah, and so we spend so much time talking about why protein is important. It helps with our muscles, our tissues, keeps our appetite in check, jacks up our energy levels. But we don't talk about how much we should be eating right. each day. So I really appreciate this, this question. Here's the easiest way to figure out how much you need. Take your weight in pounds, divide it in half, and that's about how much protein you should be eating each and every day. It's oh not an exact in ounces, science. Obviously. In ounces, In grams. In grams. In grams. So it's not an exact science, but it's a really good reference number. So, for example, if you weigh 140 pounds, you want to aim to eat 70 grams of protein wow. each and Never every knew day. That. Yeah. Never Never knew that. And also, um, I should <clears throat> say that you need a little bit more if you're pregnant if you're nursing or if you're a serious athlete. And these are some foods that are rich Yeah, in so protein. the good news is that there, there's so many foods that have a lot of protein. So for example, um, a cup of cottage cheese has about 24 grams of protein. This is Greek yogurt. A cup has about anywhere from 15 to 18 grams. Two tablespoons of peanut butter, about eight grams. An egg, six grams. A cup of beans has a lot, or lentils. This is a palm size or a deck of cards for chicken, fish, or meat, 21 grams. And when you think about it, we probably have double this yeah. for lunch and dinner. Let's so, talk about these sure. next foods here because we've got a viewer question related to heart health. Okay. Let's take a listen. 
Hey Joy, this is Steve from Westchester, New York. I was just wondering if there are any specific foods that I might be able to eat to help me lower cholesterol. That's a great question. Yeah, so diet has a huge impact on our cholesterol level. And in order to lower our cholesterol numbers, first you wanna minimize saturated fat, refined carbs and added sugar. And I know that's easier said than done, but it's really important. But the good news is that there are actually foods that have cholesterol lowering capabilities. Yeah. And I geek out over this because yeah. it really illustrates the power of Food. healthy eating. Yeah. So first I'm gonna start by saying that there's a type of fiber called soluble fiber, yeah. and it has the capability of latching on to circulating cholesterol and escorting it out of our body. And you find it in things like apples, avocado, oats, these are chia, chia seeds, seeds. Um, chia lentils seeds. and beans. Here I'm showing pistachio nuts because pistachio nuts as well as sunflower seeds, they have this natural occurring plant-based compounds called mm. plant stanols or sterols. Mm. And all you need to know is that that helps to block the absorption oh, wow. of cholesterol. I so love pistachios. These are the it's things you to wanna know, put Joy. onto your menu. Very, very yeah. helpful. Sunflower seeds also help keep you awake on a road trip. That's true. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew there was a it's car in the studio? <laughs> okay, now we have a question about chocolate. I know that dark chocolate is healthier than milk chocolate, and I want to switch. What percent should I look for in the grocery store? Thanks so much, Joy. All that's nice. <laughs> so sweet. We, yeah, sometimes if you get too much dark chocolate, it, it's bitter. That's right. So, like, as a general guideline, the darker the chocolate, the higher the percentage of cacao or cocoa, mm -hmm. the greater the health perks. But it's not as easy as just going to the store and buying the highest percentage because then you don't have that out of this world indulgent chocolate mm -hmm. experience. So what I like to do is, first off, we're showing here the middle ground. So this is between 60 and 80%, okay. I think oh, so is the sweet good. spot because oh, good chocolate. it delivers melt in your mouth deliciousness. Mm -hmm. I would tell people to start at 60% yeah. and then slowly work your way up and yeah. see where your palate prefers. 70 is great. I love like 72% mm -hmm. and there's Ooh. a lot of great brands out there. If you're only looking for pure health, okay. you could go for the gusto, 80 plus percent, Ooh. but I'm just gonna tell you, it's gonna be intense, it's gonna be That's dark. a lot. It's, it's not, not as gonna... sweet and indulgent. Yes. All right. All right, so okay. next we're talking, I think sodium, let's listen to our last question. Hi Joy, this is Darby and Mango from Austin, Texas. I wanted to reach out about salty foods and why they make me swollen. I've always heard this happens, but why does it happen and how long does it usually last? That's a great question. We have a saying in my office where sodium goes, water flows. Ah. This is a real thing. So it is. I've learned my lesson in the mornings. <laughs> the sodium, sodium is a component of salt. Okay. And when you eat a salty meal, that sodium draws in water okay. and you're gonna feel it in your fingers. Sometimes yep. you get a swollen face, face, puffiness around the belly. The good news is it will usually ease up in 24 hours or so. Okay. And you can also expedite the process by drinking a lot of flat water okay. and eating potassium rich foods. Oh shoot, we're out of time, so let's hurry. Oh, okay, so so some of oh. the most more surprising places that you okay. would get sodium, we have, you know, the like sausage, sausages, meat, jerky, yep, yep. Shrimp, shrimp is really salty, shrimp? bread. Really? Bread has a ton. And obviously, restaurant meals, they mm -hmm. pack in the salt. Okay. So For you just want to be mindful. Cholesterol lowering recipes, it's today.com slash food. We'll be right back. Thank you. I like something.
We are back at 8.52 now with more of our heart health series. And we just showed you the importance of exercise, but there's, of course, another key factor, what you eat. The Cleveland Clinic just released results from its annual National Heart Survey, and the response to, to what posed the greatest barrier to getting healthy really caught our attention. Check this out. Nearly half of Americans surveyed said they viewed healthy food as more expensive. So we wanted to try and, and debunk that assumption. So we're going to do that this morning. And to help us do that, Vanessa Rosetta, registered dietitian. Good to have you back. Thanks for having me. This has been a misconception in a lot of communities for, I think, a long time. The idea that healthy has to be expensive, but you maintain not so. Not so. This is why dietitians exist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there are a lot of tips and tricks for you to be eating healthy. So, for example, people always think, you know, f vegetables and fruit are super expensive mm -hmm. and that you can only eat organic. Well, actually, you know, the dollar store has frozen fruits and vegetables for sale for one dollar. Wow. So if you want to have vegetables in your life and you are afraid or you don't have time or, you know, cost is a problem for you, yeah. you can go to the dollar store and you can get a bag of carrots or a frozen bag of berries. And to be clear, there's the same nutritional value in frozen fruits and vegetables that, as, as raw. That's right. And actually minimal processing. So they're allowed to ripen to peak and then flash frozen. So it's up for grabs. Okay. Yeah. Oatmeal bakes. Oh, that's what I do. I make these oatmeal bakes for my kids. I yeah. want them to eat oatmeal and I dump the frozen fruit in there and I bake it and they think I'm a genius. They add peanut butter. We've got fat. We've got protein. We've got fiber. We've got antioxidants. Yeah. And I'm a winner. And it's pretty simple. Yeah. All right, let's talk about, we've covered fruits, let's talk about veggies now. You've got a simple trick for veggies as well. So find the ones that you like. Yeah. My son only likes carrots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you get them in bulk on a Sunday. You cut them up. You put them in water in a glass container. Or for my kids, we just put them in Ziploc bags because they're grabbing yeah. and going. Yeah. That's, so buy in bulk is a secret. It's a secret, and they, you go through it pretty quick. And you also mentioned to buy non-starch veggies. Yeah, so non-starchy veggies help to keep you full. They he help your gut be healthy, which helps for immunity. It's winter, so people are getting more sick, so more vegetables help you be better for longer. And a few examples of non-starch veggies. Yeah, so carrots, celery, arugula, spinach. There's, again, one of the greatest misconceptions, perhaps, seafood, expensive. Well, it can be expensive if yeah. you're going to go to, you know, a fishmonger and you're going to buy $30 a pound halibut or, you know, salmon. But if you don't want to do that, and also people are a little bit weird about fish yes. as, um, as a leftover. Yeah. So buying them in bulk, you can get them at the regular grocer or you can get them at, you know, a Sam's or a Costco. And so now you're just getting one piece at a time. You can defrost before you leave the house, put it in the fridge. When you get home, it'll be ready olive oil, some Dijon mustard in the air fryer, and you had one perfect piece, so you're not wasting. And these are packed with omega-3s. Omega-3s is for your cardiovascular health, for yeah. your brain health, reduces the risk of cancer. A lot of recipes, of course, call for butter, the call for olive oil. How do we save there? So, I buy in bulk. You can get two to three pounds. I know that is that is quite the large can. Of, that's quite the large container of olive oil. Yes. You're right. Also, you know, you can get online just a container that will allow you to pour, perfectly like portion that out. So you could fill it up and then hide that so you don't have to look at it. It's about sixteen to twenty dollars depending okay. on the weight that you have. And remember, the serving size of olive oil, you know is still one tablespoon. So we know it has anti-inflammatory properties, but one tablespoon is sufficient. All right, let's talk about really quickly here, saving money on snacking as well. So I'm a dietitian, so snacking is oh, how snacking, I live snack. my life. This okay, is, good. I'm always thinking about the snacks that I'm having. Uh, I love to go to any kind of pharmacy to get the deal. So the two for one for the yeah, nuts or you. the chickpeas, fiber. I'm always looking for fiber and protein. But also, I will always die on the sword of chocolate, which is my favorite thing. I eat it every single day. It has fat. It has protein. And if you get over 85%, it also has fiber. So Vanessa, thank you. Thank you.
are back on the third hour of today with another edition of Superfood Friday SOS. <laughs> today, nutrition and health expert Joy Bauer is here to answer your superfood questions. Hey, Joy. Hi, Joy. Good to see you. I love Fridays. Okay, we've got our first question okay. from Lily in New York, and it's something I think we can all relate to. Lily? I seem to always hit a wall around 3 p.m. and start feeling so tired. What are the best foods and drinks to help with the afternoon slump? Thank you. Oh, good question. Mm, so we've all experienced the yeah. dreaded yeah. afternoon slump. Um, it's frustrating, but it's quite normal and there's a scientific explanation. It's all about our circadian rhythm, okay. which then triggers a drop in blood sugar, smack in the afternoon, and it's typically right between when we wake up in the morning and mm -hmm. when we go to sleep at night. The good mm. news is there's a few things we could do to perk ourselves up. First, sip some water. Hydration is very important. Okay. And also consider a gentle hit of caffeine. You don't want to drink too much because it's going to interfere with sleep. So you can either do a cup of coffee that's a mix with mm -hmm. regular and decaf, okay. or I'm showing a cup of tea because that has half the caffeine of coffee. And definitely power up with energizing snacks. Okay. So these snacks are great for Focus. They keep mm -hmm. us feeling sharp and sustain energy. It's an apple with string cheese, mm -hmm. or we have a rice cheese. cake mm. with some peanut butter or yogurt with berries. Okay. Here I'm showing Jeez, my budgie. These are energy These are bites, delicious. and I have two different versions. So this is a chocolate peanut butter, okay. mm. and this I gave it an extra kick with some espresso powder. Oh. So if you want to jolt from the caffeine, just the powder. Um, yeah, I add mm. in the powder with a whole bunch of things like rolled oats, and I have chia seeds mm. and nut butter, mm. and it's so simple. And That's the good, good thing is you make a great big batch. It lasts in the refrigerator for weeks mm. and weeks, good. and it'll lift it you like up. Candy. I know it's it good. It tastes Almost a little like bit like a brownie. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm. So next we have a question for all of the drinkers out there like myself take a listen joy this is melanie from denver colorado my question for you today is about tea i drink a lot of tea and there are a lot of options green chamomile black and i'm wondering what you think is best that's a good question thank you Ooh, yeah I don't know the question. difference. It's a great question. And truly, it's impossible to pick just one sure. tea because there are so many great varieties. Mm -hmm. But here are the standouts. So black, white, and oolong tea are packed with antioxidants, and they help to fight inflammation, which means that it's also going to reduce the risk for a laundry list of conditions like heart disease, cancer, type 2 diabetes. Chamomile tea is great if you're feeling frazzled because it helps to hmm, ease stress and anxiety. Mm -hmm. Green tea is which one am a I drinking? super food in its own right. I don't even know. I don't either. Um, but green tea we'll has all green of the tea. antioxidants that black tea has, but also oh, it can help to protect and promote skin health. Oh. And some studies show that it has a modest assistance with weight loss as well. Hmm. And then we also have turmeric and ginger. Fantastic if you're dealing with aches and pains from exercise or arthritis. Okay. And the last one is peppermint. I peppermint love is great peppermint. for IBS. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Peppermint can help with gas and stomach discomfort and distension. Wow. But not That's with heartburn. As Ted Lasso <laughs> says, I used to think tea was just brown, dirty water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much is. All right, we got two minutes. <laughs> we love anything Ted Lasso says. <laughs> All right, what's this next one here? This one uh, for you, Craig. Oh, yeah, we've got a question here from someone who's trying to get in shape for the summer. Hey, Joy. My name is David Rodriguez from Miami, Florida. I work out a few times a week for about an hour per session, and I was wondering, what are the best foods to eat before I exercise? Thank you. Okay. So That's contrary to what a lot of people think, you do not need to eat anything before a bout of moderate exercise. And hmm. I would define that as an hour or less. So it's really a personal choice. Wait, an hour of exercise is moderate? Yeah. Yes. So if, <laughs> if, if your you joy bower it is. <laughs> if you feel energized and strong without eating anything on an mm -hmm. empty stomach, go to it. But if you feel jittery and you need a little bit of mm -hmm. umph, mm -hmm. the name of the game is keep it light. So mm -hmm. one of the most perfect snacks, I'm showing a banana yeah. because it's totable. It is easy to digest mm -hmm. and it also contains a lot of potassium, which is an electrolyte that we tend to lose through good. sweat when we exercise. Mm -hmm. And I also have a cup of coffee because 30 to 60 minutes before, mm -hmm. a cup of coffee can actually help you work out longer oh, and stronger. It gives you the energy, right. yes. I imagine, yeah. Uh, right. This next one is um, from Marcy in Connecticut, having to do with acid reflux. Okay. Yeah. I suffer with acid reflux, and I was wondering if there are any foods that might soothe it or any foods that um, I can avoid. I really need some help, so if you have any information, I'd really appreciate it. Hmm. 
There are no magic foods that can help minimize acid reflux, but there are a lot of things that you could do to make yourself feel better. Okay. I think the first thing is to eat smaller meals because mm -hmm. larger meals puts pressure on the stomach walls, which increases stomach acid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The second thing is to not lie down after eating. Right. Um, so wait at least three hours after eating dinner because it's easy then for the food to travel up. Mm -hmm. And in terms of trigger foods, okay. you want to avoid bubbly beverages, mm -hmm. avoid alcohol, avoid caffeine. Yeah. Sorry about the mm -hmm. coffee thing. And also acidic foods like we're showing here, tomato sauce, mm. the citrus fruits, mm -hmm. heavy uh -huh. rich meals. And ironically, I'm showing peppermint over there because peppermint and chocolate can relax the sphincter mm. in the esophagus mm. and make it more likely that the food is going to come up. So peppermint so is good for IBS, but not for suffer. reflux. Well, yes. okay. Check with things. your doctor. Yes. Yeah, these Definitely guys. check with your doctor. And there's great medications uh, that help, obviously. Mm. Well, thank you, Joy. Thank you. Joy. It. Head to today.com slash food for the recipes for Joy's chocolate peanut Those butter, energy bites, mm. and the espresso bites. This morning on today's checklist, we are going to take a closer look at our gut health. What's the difference between, this is good, yeah. probiotics, prebiotics, and then something I just learned about today, postbiotics. So here to help us is registered dietitian and CEO of Kalina Health, Vanessa Rosetto. Hi. Vanessa, welcome. Nice to see you. So let's first just tackle this. Let's talk about why gut health is so important. We're hearing more and more about it lately. Sure. So gut health is important because it helps you to regulate your immunity. It helps with your mental health. So that beneficial bacteria is really going to help you be well. But metabolism the, too? Metabolism too, which okay. also gets everybody very turned up. Yep, We're excited. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> excited. But the research is still ongoing, right? Mm. So we don't exactly know what is right and what isn't. We think we know what a healthy microbiome looks like, okay. but the other thing to remember is that your gut microbiome changes every 60 days due to environmental factors, any kind of stress, any kind of antibiotics that you're on. Okay. So taking probiotics every single day may or may not be may the best or, Okay, thing. so let's dig in, because that's the thing. I always worry I'll mess something up. It's already messed up, yeah. but I don't want to make it worse. <laughs> okay, so we got, your turn. So we've got pickles, kimchi, uh, fermented things. Those are? Probiotics. Okay. So if you're not really interested in taking a pill that. every mm -hmm. single day, you yeah. don't have to. Actually, there was an article that just came out that said, if you eat kimchi every single day for two and a half months, mm -hmm. that is just as good as taking a probiotic. Really? Mm -hmm. I love that. Yep. Well, I love kimchi. Yeah, so you could save your money mm -hmm. and like there, there's pickles there's kefir there are chia seeds there's cottage cheese there's mm -hmm. sour cream again kimchi so you can find the thing that you like and you could save some money All right. that's good and, kimchi. And Where do, it naturally. That? do it naturally oh, yes. 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 yes so Enjoy if that. you are doing it naturally it's, there is no reason to take an, a supplement you can or you or you can't it okay. just depends on what your symptoms are so that's the other thing you have to take the exact probiotic at the exact dose mm, okay. for the symptom that you have so when someone says like oh i take this probiotic it makes me feel great that's great but maybe that person has bloating and maybe oh. you have delayed digestion Something and so else. you need to take care of yourself okay. and whatever works for so you. So how do you work it into your daily routine? Eat fruits and vegetables. That's really <laughs> good. Right? Diversify what your intake is and then if you are having probiotics you want to have one every other day. You're introducing a new bacteria into your body. Right. That's okay. going on. <laughs> You're introducing a new bacteria into your body okay. and that might cause a lot of GI discomfort. So you want to take your time with that. And if it doesn't work for you, don't take it. Nothing bad's going to happen. And what is this with the antibiotics? Right. So the antibiotics are ridding you of all the bacteria in your body. So if you oh. take it together, there's no points. So you uh -huh. want to separate. So if you take your antibiotic in the morning, then you want to have the probiotic oh, like don't later, take together. later on in the day. Yeah, you could still do Okay. Both. Yeah. Great. Uh, Mr. Rooker's taking your advice yeah, yeah. clearly to heart. If anybody else hopefully, listen, hopefully, hopefully no one else wanted any pickles. I want his GI tract to be good. healthy and happy. Um, so let's talk about prebiotics for a moment since yeah. we just talked about probiotics. What are prebiotics and what are the, the health benefits to these? So prebiotics help the probiotics do their job, but you okay. cannot find them in supplement form. They come from indigestible complex carbohydrates. So you're thinking chicory root. If you had a bar that had 17 grams of fiber, that comes from something called or chicory. You also get it in oats, you get it in garlic, you get it in onions, asparagus. So eating that helps your probiotic do its job. Also helps with an absorption of calcium, which also helps the gut with more immunity. And you can't get this as, as a supplement? No, you cannot. Only from food. Not yet. Or never. 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 <laughs> never. <laughs> Just the way that it's going to be broken down. That's so not so let's talk about these postbiotics, because again, this is a term that I was not familiar with in, until yesterday. But what are they? So postbiotics happen after the probiotic bacteria break down the fiber from a fruit and vegetable. Okay. But we don't really understand it. It's kind of a buzzword. 
You don't need to do anything special. Eat your fruits and vegetables. Also, you can find it in chocolate, in tea, or coffee. Okay. But the verdict's not out. So don't start searching the internet for postbiotics thinking it's going to make some kind of difference. It's better for you to go back to getting it naturally from foods, anything fermented, fruits and vegetables. Make sure you're drinking water. Yeah. Take vitamin D. Get your gut healthy, and you should be fine. So focus on prebiotics and well, probiotics. Prebiotics. But it probiotics. sounds like if you diversify what you eat, you're getting mm -hmm. all the necessary nutrients. Yes. Okay. Like <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Vanessa, it. thank you you're so welcome. much. This was good. For more information on gut health, just head to today.com. Are you done, like, binging on everything? Oh, these, like, these, these all pistachios. The today. Those are Sicilian. Ooh, Ooh very nice. Ooh. That's right. They make you an offer you can't maybe refuse. They, maybe, they know where my, <laughs> maybe they know where my luggage is. Hello, and thanks for joining us on Consumer Confidential here on Today All Day. I'm Vicki Wynn. From finding affordable housing to battling gray hair and even new service to shuttle your teens around, we have something for everyone. But first, many of us are looking for ways to live longer and feel healthier as we age. Could the answer be found in so-called longevity clinics? They're not cheap. To see what they're like, I checked into a longevity clinic right here in Manhattan. The aging process dead in its tracks. Unlike in the movie Death Becomes Her, drinking a magic potion won't make you live forever. I'm a girl. But that doesn't mean we aren't obsessed with living longer. Even celebrities like Maria Menounos promoting oh, the health benefits of full body scans to, to Hoda on Today. That you have to be the CEO of your health. Longevity medicine is the business of helping people live healthier, longer lives. Last year, it topped $26 billion in the U.S. I'm here outside the Princeton Longevity Center in Manhattan to give you a look at what happens. But first, I had to fill out an extensive health questionnaire. Everything from my eating habits to my sleeping habits to my family's medical history. And we are here bright and early today because this whole experience is going to take about eight hours. Welcome to Princeton Longevity Center. After check-in, I'm taken to my private lounge where I'll rest between medical exams and tests. Okay, I'm told the first thing we're doing this morning is getting my vital signs. They're going to draw some blood. They're checking my hormone levels. They're going to look at kidney and liver function. And they're doing it all this morning so that we can get the results by this afternoon. Pretty quick turnaround. I'm getting a bone density and body scan to measure my bone strength and muscle mass. Blood draws to screen for things like genetic cancer markers, cholesterol, and vitamin deficiencies. Oh, last one already? You're on the last one. Yay. A test of my resting metabolic rate to see how many calories I burn just by existing. So when I'm resting, my body's burning a, 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 a thousand calories. Around a thousand, around a thousand, a thousand calories. calories. And a standard physical. Ever been told you snore? No, I don't think I snore. Dr. David Fine founded the Princeton Longevity Center in 2001 to help people optimize their health with nutrition, exercise, and medical care with the hope of living longer and better. Who makes an ideal patient? Because for some people, knowing what's coming down the road can make them more anxious and more stressed. On the one hand, that's true. On the other hand, though, you have two choices. You can find out what's going on or it can find you. Where is the sweet spot where some things may resolve on their own versus I'm going in and doing so much intervention and some of it may not be necessary. Well, you know, certainly a lot of things do resolve on their own. What we're really looking for really are more of the things that are going to be the chronic diseases of getting older. Your risk of diabetes, your risk of heart attacks and strokes, your, your cancer risk, for example. My day continues with a CT scan of my heart and body. A few tests down, a few more to go. Nearly three and a half hours later. Breakfast at last. A quick bite and a cardiac stress test with a sports physiologist. This is definitely aptly named stress test. Then a vision and hearing test. Next up is the ultimate athlete stress test. I thought that walking thing was hard. I think this is going to be really rough. The price you have to pay if you want to be an athlete. <laughs> what if you're just a reporter? I'm hooked up to the same machine used by Olympic athletes to measure my oxygen output and heart health. You got it, you got it. The view from the top? unbeatable, but after 10 minutes with the speed and incline creeping up, I'm beat. Ah, I survived it, barely. I get my results quickly. Your act, heart is acting like a 28-year-old. 
But when I meet with the nutritionist who reviewed my food logs, she tells me to beef up my protein intake. Out of all your calories, only 15% is coming from protein. How much so should be coming? It should be 30 to 40. Oh, wow. Yes. Then I get the verdict on my overall health. On the whole, you're actually in really good health. Dr. Fine says the scans did find the bone density in my hips is below normal, and my body fat percentage was above average at 36%. He recommended weight-bearing exercise and strength training. Muscle Time to mass. pump exactly. me up. Hmm. Then an Come unexpected down. result. You had a small nodule okay. over here in your left lung. It's this little guy right there. Wow, okay. Dr. Fine says it's likely a harmless lymph node, but recommended I get scanned in a year to check for growth. We don't yet have a lot of data on the experiences of people who are taking up these new services. Dan Belsky is a professor at Columbia University's Butler Aging Center. If someone doesn't have the time or, frankly, the money to invest in a screening like the one I underwent, what do you tell them to do? Eat a healthy diet, exercise, fill your life with things that matter to you. A social network surrounding and supporting you, that can be incredibly important for building healthy longevity. If you want to try it, Belsky says, talk to your primary care doctor about the tests you want to take, research the facility and provider credentials, and avoid untested procedures that promise anti-aging effects. So the, the big question, can you tell me how long I'm gonna live? You are certainly younger biologically than you are chronologically. We will get to the Smucker's Jar. And as a result of my visit, I have actually changed a lot of my habits. I've purchased a weighted vest. It's six pounds. I wear it when I walk to help increase the bone density in my hips. I've also upped my protein take by adding things like fish, turkey jerky, and protein shakes to my weekly meals. But again, these clinics, they're not cheap. My visit cost about $5,000. Some of these longevity clinics offer services throughout the entire year, though. That can go for $60,000 or more. A lot of it is not covered by insurance, so always ask ahead of time. Now we turn to another hot topic, anti-gray hair products. According to Advanced Dermatology, 30% of Americans say they spend the most money on their hair color. It can be tempting to try a product that promises to reduce or delay gray hair, but do they really work? Call it 50 shades of anti-gray. One of the hottest hair care trends for those looking to hold back the hands of time. I recently found this gray hair treatment. We're hoping for the best. It's supposed to go deep into the scalp to the bulb and restore the hair color. All you have to do is target your gray areas. Some sharing their experience on social media, trying popular serums and supplements, promising to delay the gray. This is what it looks like. I'm also not ready. You just apply it kind of in lines. For any salt with my pepper. Feels nice. If anything, I'm at least getting a scalp massage. With 6 to 23% of the world's population showing at least 50% gray hair coverage by age 50, in the past year, search interest in anti-gray hair serum climbing 280% in the U.S. alone. We just have to kind of accept some facts of life, and gray hair is one of them. Dr. Mona Gohara is a board-certified dermatologist. What causes gray hair? We're all born with a certain number of hair follicles and a predetermined number of hair follicle cycles. There are little pigment-producing factories in our hair follicles called melanocytes that give us our hair color. Sometimes the melanocytes get tired. They just don't want to work anymore. And that's when our hair turns gray. She says anti-gray products aim to stimulate those melanocytes. Do they work? Can I make a joke and say it's kind of in the gray zone? <laughs> Whether the melanocytes are actually nudged is questionable. I don't know that we have any definitive science to say that that's actually happening. One well-known plant-based serum containing ingredients like caffeine, peptides, and vitamins promises to deliver real, visible results in as soon as 90 days. According to its website, the company behind the serum bases the statement on a three-month clinical study of 15 participants, of which 64% reported seeing less gray hair. For best results, the brand also recommends using its Gray Delay Supplement, a blend of vitamins, antioxidants, minerals, and botanicals, described as ideal for those with little to no gray hair. While the Food and Drug Administration does not review anti-gray hair products for safety before they hit the market, Ohara considers them low risk for side effects, which could include irritation from serums or gastrointestinal issues with supplements. They're pretty safe, and that's why I think it's okay to try it on a small area.
but she says check with your doctor before trying them. While prices vary per product, serum and supplement combos can cost $70 to $140, with most brands offering a discounted price when you sign up for a monthly subscription. Gohara says before spending your money, look to the root of the problem. It is 100% about our genetics. Now, there are other things that can give us gray hair, Vicky. There are some- Like my kids. That, yeah, oh, definitely. Your teenagers. <laughs> In a statement to NBC News, Vegamore says their serum helps reduce the appearance of grays on new hair growth, and their supplement helps preserve the hair's natural pigment and delays grays. All right, coming up, think twice before posting photos online. The unintended consequences of a photo post. with a warning about photo fakes as more of us rely on online connections professionally and personally how do you know who you're really talking to is that profile picture the real person it's a problem that's becoming more common here are the red flags you need to watch for how many of you have been threatened by someone who's upset thinking they know you all of you they're young, they're good looking, and they're on social media. Kayla, Cami, Tristan, and Justin say scammers have stolen their images to create fake online profiles and then use those profiles to lure people into online relationships, grooming them into sending money. I had a family contact me and they wanted me to inform their grandfather like that it wasn't me that he was talking to. Is this something you have to deal with every day? Yeah, 100%. All say their photos now live on hundreds, even thousands of fake social media profiles, many times using their real names. I've actually been contacted by like the FBI and CIS, basically confirming that I'm not behind all of this. These women, they spend thousands of dollars thinking I'm going to come see them. Justin says he saw a post online, a woman celebrating her engagement to him. He messaged her and warned her husband to be wasn't real. Then the scammer saw Justin's comment. The scammer calls me and he's like, you're messing with my business. And I'm like, it's my face. This is not your business. Justin recorded the call. Oh, everybody but this poor girl, right? What did you say? Well, no. Tristan, a fitness coach, says some women who thought they were having an online relationship with him even hired him for in-person training. They just want to confirm that it's actually me, and then they'll just waste my time. Cybercrime continues to rise in America. Last year, reports of romance scams alone amounted to a reported loss of $1.3 billion. Among the top lies used to ask for money, someone close is sick, hurt, or in jail, and I am in the military. Three of these four have served or are serving. I think that military personnel are targeted because you can use the excuse because of security concerns. I can't send you a picture right now. I'm not allowed to video chat. California-based Social Catfish is a people search engine that focuses on online safety. 
Their search results help customers find and remove fake profiles. The internet's still the wild, wild west. There are very few laws to protect you online for the use of your images. CEO David McClellan says these stolen images can lead to very real danger. I had people actually showing up and, you know, getting getting upset with me in person. And it's even happened to me. Vicky, we decided to run your image and here's what we found. We found a Vicky Wind channel selling for $799. We also found a Clubhouse link of somebody actually using your image to most likely talk to other people online. And we found a celebrity foot website that has all your feet pics. My feet? That is gross and weird. McClellan says you can take steps to protect your images. Set your social media profiles to private. Limit what you post. Add watermarks to your photos and run reverse image searches. It's free with Google Images. If you can't meet the person within like a week, it's not real. By the way, those websites that were found with my pictures, Social Catfish has helped me take those down. And a few good reminders, never send money to someone you haven't met. Anytime someone online asks you for money, stop contact with them immediately and report that to the FTC. Artificial intelligence technology is also making it easier for scammers. A simple phone call is all it takes to extort money. The FBI says on average, victims of schemes using new voice technology lose about $11,000 each. And recently, scams have reached a new level with AI clones that look and sound like real celebrities spreading fake messages online. Today we are launching an investment project. That From Elon Musk pitching an investment opportunity to Gail King promoting a weight loss product. Follow the link right now and learn more about my secret. It seems fake ads made with AI are everywhere. Even Tom Hanks has found himself an unwilling spokesperson, warning his Instagram followers, there's a video out there promoting some dental plan with an AI version of me. I have nothing to do with it. While celebrity endorsement scams are nothing new, in the age of AI, these deceitful deep fakes are becoming more convincing, fooling those who buy into them. The FBI says last year victims lost a record $10.2 billion to scams and other online crimes. With just a few seconds of audio, new artificial intelligence software can clone a person's voice. As an actor, I pretend for a living. As an actor, I pretend for a living. And a scammer can make it say anything. The Federal Trade Commission issuing a recent warning that voice cloning technology is making family emergency scams more convincing. Earlier this year, several Oregon school districts warned parents about a spate of fake kidnapping calls. A recent global survey showed one in four people saying they've experienced an AI voice cloning scam or knew someone who had. I got a phone call from an unknown number. And so I pick up the phone and I say hello. And my daughter Brianna says, Mom, and she's crying and sobbing. Jennifer DeStefano says she was convinced her 15 year old daughter Brianna had been kidnapped. And uh, she says, Mom, these bad men have me. Help me, help me, help me. She fades off as a man takes over the phone and says, Listen here, I've got your daughter. She says the scammer threatened to harm her daughter unless she sent him a million dollars. How much did it sound like your daughter? It sounded, I never doubted it was her. I, I had a full conversation with her. It was the way she cries, it was the way she sobs, it was the way she would respond to me. Jennifer was able to connect with her husband who confirmed Brianna was safe. After warning her friends and neighbors, Jennifer says she's heard of similar incidents. Whether it was a kidnapping, whether it was an accident, you know, they were in jail, all these different types of scenarios. We're going to have a completely new group of scammers and threat actors. Wasim Khalid is CEO and co-founder of Blackbird AI. I saw that in some of these voice cloning programs are as cheap as $5 a month, and you can take someone's voice off of a social media video, use AI, and make that voice say whatever you want it to do. Is that really happening? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's basically the, the revolution in AI over the last six months. The key takeaway here is generative AI is going to be the catalyst to drive misinformation, disinformation, and warped realities further and faster than we've ever seen before. He says if you get a suspicious call about a family emergency, first authenticate the person by having them confirm information only you two would know. Have a private safe word for your family and have someone else call your loved one's actual phone number. Because with AI, what you see and hear 
is not always what you get. Up next, a new Uber feature that allows teens to order their own rides. Consumer Confidential continues right after the break. Rideshare Uber has a new feature that could make things a lot easier for busy parents. Have you ever had a child stuck at school while you're at work and unable to pick them up? Introducing Uber for Teens. Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to what we're sure will be our greatest year at Ride In. As classic as the movie Grease, so is the ritual of returning to class. And with it comes hectic teen schedules. School, sports practice, band, even going to the mall. Solving the riddle of all those rides can be worse than a wordle. I should know, my own teenage daughter Emerson is as busy as ever. So we're trying out Uber for Teens. It's a new service that allows teens to order their own rides. It starts here on my phone in the Uber app. Teens can actually create an account on their own. A parent or guardian has to invite them. So you go to your Uber app, hit account, and then family and teens, Right there, invite family, and there it is, add a teen. The app, designed for teens 13 to 17, sends Emerson an invite, and from there, she creates her own teen account after reading a safety tutorial. Uber says parents should talk to their teens before they use the service, remind them to check the license plate, ask the driver who they're picking up before getting in, and never sit in the front seat. I'm ordering my ride now. Here I am at work and I just got a text. Yep, it's a notification. It says Emerson just requested a ride and the driver is arriving in four minutes. The car pulls up. Hey, how are you? Who are you here for? Um, Emerson. Yep, yeah, all right. But the driver can't start the ride without a personal identification number or PIN from Emerson's app to ensure she's in the right car. We will have uh, one uh, PIN for me. The PIN is Six, two, five, five. She's on her way while I follow along from my office. It shows me Emerson's been picked up and it shows me she'll be dropped off in seven minutes. I can even call the driver to check in. Is Emerson in the car with you? Yes, ma'am. She is here. Great. Is everything going okay? Everything perfect, ma'am. Just perfect. Hey, Emerson, are you there? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, cool. Everything's good on your end? Going great. Uber says drivers with teen passengers can't change drop-off locations, and if the drive goes off course or stops for extended periods of time, Uber will call the driver and teen, and if necessary, 911. 
Uber Vice President Sachin Kansal notes the safety features are mandatory and cannot be turned off. Our kids are very precious cargo. For parents, the most important thing was visibility and tracking. Can any driver drive teens or do they have to go through a vetting process? They have to be an experienced driver on our platform and they have to be positively rated throughout. In addition, Uber says it conducts criminal background checks and reviews driving records every year, providing a new option for busy parents just in time for the start of school. Thanks for the ride. We also tried the new Uber Eats feature for teens multiple times, but we did experience a few glitches from not getting notifications to receiving the wrong order. Uber tells us that this feature is still being tested and developed. Coming up, the latest housing trend. What to know about build-to-rent communities that are popping up across the country. Imagine living in a three or four bedroom home, two car garage and a backyard without all the responsibilities of home ownership. Introducing build to rent communities, entire neighborhoods of single family homes built just for renting. They're popping up across the country and they're already helping to alleviate the national housing shortage. The American dream isn't for sale, it's for rent in this community near Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome to Harmony Heights, 153 and four bedroom single family homes, all brand new and part of the build to rent trend. Renters enjoy modern appliances and luxury finishes, spacious closets and smart home technology. An app allows them to request fixes. Their monthly rent and a small fee cover all maintenance and landscaping. Think of an apartment complex, except you break it down into single family homes. Richard Ross is CEO of Quinn Residences. Who is renting these homes? A third of our residents are people who can't come up with a down payment. They can't afford seven, seven and a half percent mortgage today. But two thirds of our residents are residents by choice, meaning they elect to rent. While the median sales price for existing homes has dropped nearly 2% from last year, a recent report shows renting as more cost effective than home ownership in 95% of the U.S. right now. Here in the United States, there are almost a thousand of these build to rent communities with single family detached homes. More than 500 are in the works. Each community has 50 or more homes renting for an average of $2,000 a month. Well, I never even heard of a community that was strictly a rental community. So I was pretty intrigued by it. Luke and Rebecca Montgomery spent a year looking to buy a home, but struggled to find anything within their price range and big enough for their family. Then they found this neighborhood on Zillow. This is not the time to buy or, or build. We would rather wait it out a little bit and see what happens. So this was just the right solution for us. How nice is it to have the benefits of home ownership without the responsibility. It's nice to be able to know that in the event something happens, it's not all gonna fall on your shoulders. I can find myself very bored. I don't have to cut the grass. Empty nesters Marco and Myra Martinez says the low maintenance lifestyle gives them more time to enjoy the things they love. I love to hear the birds uh, singing and to see the trees uh, behind my house. It's beautiful. 
A career change prompting their move from Texas. The couple says instead of buying, they decided to rent so they could see if they liked the area first. This community offered us a, a great opportunity to rent a house where we feel safe. You don't have to own all the time. I mean, you can make the decision of renting and, and, and thinking about it. And sometimes that's better than just uh, owning. You can use an online calculator like one of these to see if it makes sense for you to rent or buy in a particular location. People are taking a different path to home ownership. David Howard, CEO of the National Rental Home Council, says Build to Rent provides an innovative way to introduce supply into the housing market, which is an estimated 6 million homes short. What does it mean when it comes to affordability? It is almost $1,000 less expensive on average to rent a single family home than to make a mortgage payment on a single family home. When considering Build to Rent, experts say do your homework. Look for reputable developers. You can search those affiliated with the National Rental Home Council at buildforrenthomes.com. Also, think about location and if the community matches your family's lifestyle. Tips to help you lay the foundation for your version of the American dream. That is our time for now. Be sure to join me for another edition of Consumer Confidential. For all of us at NBC News, I'm Vicki Wynn. Chocolate. It's a perfect combination of bitter, sweet, creamy, and rich. For many, chocolate isn't just a treat, it's a sensory escape. I'm Elena Besser. I'm a professional chef, recipe developer, content creator, and chocoholic. So I'm heading out to meet two women innovating the chocolate industry and turning an everyday luxury into something truly extraordinary. Sometimes when I go into the farm with my clippers, and I talk to the trees. I notice every detail in the tree, the flower, the color. Yadira Vasquez is the owner of Hacienda Chocolat. This cacao farm sits next to the El Yunque rainforest in Puerto Rico. What a beautiful place Thank you've got you. here. I met Yadira to learn how an ancient tropical fruit from the Amazon blossomed into a $100 billion global industry. There's so many aromas and flavors that you can experience in a chocolate bar. People have been eating cacao for over 5,000 years. Turning this fruit into chocolate was perfected by the Mayans and Aztecs. They're credited with the process of refining cacao into a frothy chocolate beverage. After the brutal Spanish conquest of the Aztecs, the drink was brought to Europe. Due to soaring demand across the continent, by the late 1800s, chocolate production had moved to Africa, where labor was essentially free. Today, 60% of the world's chocolate is grown on the Ivory Coast. Initially, the Spanish also tried to establish plantations in Puerto Rico, but they failed due to hurricanes. For centuries, leftover cacao species flourished on the island in the wild. In the late 1980s, amid fears of a global cacao shortage, the U.S. Department of Agriculture began researching these trees to find a variety that could produce more pods. The results came out that at least 10 were very good for Puerto Rico and our climate, and they were chosen for their productivity, resistance to disease, and flavor. At that time, Yadira was in medical school studying radiology. She opened her own clinic while raising three young children. But a breast cancer diagnosis in 2005 changed everything. As a doctor, I diagnosed myself. So it's, it's very scary because you're a doctor and you know exactly what it means. Yadira made several life changes to focus on recovery. She bought a few acres of undeveloped farmland to meditate, relax, and reconnect with her love of gardening. I think that uh, once you connect to nature, everything in your emotional body starts to heal. She began growing various tropical fruit trees, including cacao. And I started experimenting. I thought, I have pots, now I have to make chocolate. In 2014, Yadira won a grant from the USDA and Chocolate Cortez, one of the Caribbean's biggest producers, to bring cacao farming back to Puerto Rico. She purchased more trees and was able to expand her operation. Well, initially when I got this farm, it was a forest. So we have trees here that are probably more than 50, 60 years old. Wow. Our trails go around those trees. Within three years, her first crop was ready, but tragedy struck. 
swaths of Puerto Rico underwater, roofs ripped off, trees toppled. We've had other hurricanes in Puerto Rico, but Maria was unreal. I still look at the pictures today, and it's been, what, six years? And I feel like crying. It took two years to rebuild the farm. Actually, we do have trees that fell, and, and new branches came up, and we just left them there because they're so productive. So that's one thing I love about the tree. It's very resilient, it's very strong. I think I, I get very identified with the tree mm -hmm. because I feel like we're the same. Yeah, you're but, strong yeah. and you're resilient. A decade after her farm journey began, Yadira was able to start selling raw beans. Within a year, a special batch was entered into the Coco of Excellence Awards in Italy. I had sold those beans to Cortez, so they call me and they go like, you should send these beans, they're really good. Those beans won Yadira the Silver Award in 2021. Inspired to do more, she built her own facility to process chocolate. I might have the same tree in a different farm and the soil and the climate is going to be different and there's no way you're going to taste the similar thing any other place. Her dedication has led to two more Coco of Excellence Awards for beans and bars. When you see your name as in the Chocolate Puerto Rico among excellent other chocolate makers from all around the world, my heart just bursts. Yadira is passionate about sharing her love for cacao. Today, she makes most of her money from tourism. What do you hope the tourists walk away from coming to the farm with? Well, they learn what real chocolate is <laughs> and where it comes from. When they go, they go like, we never thought chocolate was so difficult. It helps them savor it more. Farm tour at Hacienda Chocolat is a stunning hike featuring some of Yadira's favorite plants like ginger and vanilla. But I was here for the cacao, which is incredibly difficult to grow. These trees only thrive near the equator and they need lots of water. We have multiple showers during the day, so we don't need any irrigation for the trees. They get exactly what they need. The cacao trees here are from different parts of South and Central America all with different flavors and aromas. When we're eating the chocolate bar itself, do you use a mixture of the pods? How does it work? It's a blend of all the different varieties we have here. The cacao fruit starts as a small flower that can only be pollinated by a midge fly. It opens in the morning. The midge has 24 hours to do his work. And then if it does get pollinized, you can see, I have to come closer here. You're gonna see a very tiny cacao back here. See? Oh my this gosh. <gasps> so that's, that's crazy. The baby cacao. Tree. I am shook by how oh. tiny and cute that is. Cacao pods must be harvested by hand. So Yadira put me to work. This is beautiful. So 
So we've picked about a dozen pods. How much chocolate does this make? Well, we almost have one pound of chocolate. And one pound of chocolate should give us at least 10 to 12 chocolate bars. I have a whole new appreciation for chocolate. I've, I already really appreciated chocolate. I just want to make that clear. Mm -hmm. But having this context, I appreciate it even yes. more. <laughs> Time to taste the literal fruits of my labor. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. It's so slimy. You're just going to suck. You're not going to bite or I just swallow. suck on it. Yes. It's, it tastes kind of like a mango. Exactly. It, it tastes more like tropical fruits. Mm -hmm. It can be mango. Some people say pineapple. After they're picked, the pods head to the processing facility. The first step is fermentation. Wooden boxes are lined with banana leaves, then filled with the beans, which ferment for up to 10 days. Yes. That's insane. The so, smell is almost like giving kombucha. They're air dried for about a week. So tell me why you've decided to dry them in the sun rather than using machinery. It preserves much more of the flavor. Most chocolate farmers sell their beans after fermentation. Of the roughly 6 million cacao farms around the world, only a couple hundred make their own bars commercially. That's because processing the dried beans requires expensive equipment. A special oven roasts the beans to bring out a nutty, rich flavor. We do low roast and we want to preserve the floral and the fruity notes. The beans are cracked into cacao nibs, then crushed and ground into a creamy paste known as chocolate liquor. Depending on the type of chocolate being made, cocoa butter, sugar, and milk can be added. The mixture is cooled into large blocks and aged for up to two weeks. To make a bar, the block is melted back into syrup. And the tempering process is what gives it that sexy sheen, Exactly, right? and the snappiness. The chocolate is then poured into plastic molds and refrigerated to harden. After all that work, I was ready to finally taste Yadira's award-winning chocolate. Enjoying chocolate in different ways is an essential part of the tour at Hacienda Chocolat. Yadira starts with a sip of history. First, cacao nibs are added to a warm matate, a traditional device used by the Mayans and Aztecs to make hot chocolate. You're using the force, your weight mm -hmm. on the stones. Do you want me to get in there and help yeah. out? Yeah. It, it almost feels like I'm grinding rocks. <laughs> <laughs> except the aroma makes it all oh, worth it. Yes. Yadira adds peppers just like the Mayans did. After 20 minutes of grinding, the cacao starts to lighten. I thought I was nearly done. Okay. 
How much longer should I be doing that? Like two more hours. Okay, great. Let's go. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yadira finishes the drink by mixing the cacao paste with water. To make it foamy, she uses a molinillo, a Mexican wooden whisk. The foam was said to be the spirit of the cacao. Okay. So, and it would connect the drinker of the chocolate with the gods. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Wow, this is unlike any hot chocolate I've ever had. It's definitely leaning more in the savory side of things, but I'm kind of obsessed. Time to taste the chocolate bars with a boozy twist. Not only is Yadira a chocolate expert, but she's deeply passionate about spirits. Tour goers can enjoy a chocolate pairing with a variety of spirits, including a Puerto Rican favorite locally crafted rum. The rum and the chocolate will give us a greater sensory experience than the separate ingredients. We try to choose like things that are grown in the same place. What grows together goes together. So in this case, the sugar cane is a tropical plant and the cacao tree is a tropical tree. Yadira pairs a three-year-old Añejo with her award-winning white chocolate bar topped with cacao and coffee nibs. White chocolate is pretty controversial. What makes yours special? This is a white chocolate where the powder milk has gone to the oven and it's caramelized. Just place the chocolate okay, in great. your mouth and just let it melt a little bit. I have to Whoa. bite the nibs. Mm -hmm. I'll put it again. It's a dangerous combination, my friend. The second rum, aged in a bourbon barrel, is paired with 70% dark chocolate. I feel like it's more fruity and it's a little bit more mellowed out. I'd say this is the perfect pair for someone that thinks they don't love dark chocolate. Exactly. Trying these together makes it more approachable. Like nothing I've ever tasted before, Yadira's chocolate is a love letter to the El Yunque rainforest. Every bite has a complex blend of floral and fruity notes imparted from the surrounding flora. Through her hands-on process, Yadira celebrates the land on which this cacao is grown. What do you love the most about this? Here in the forest and in the plantation, I feel like it's my real home. The scientific name is Theobroma cacao. That means uh, Theo is God and Broma is food, so it's the food of the gods. I think it is a, a gift of nature to the humans and uh, there's so many things we can do with chocolate and culinary and recipes, so it is the food of thoughts. Yes, <laughs> cheers to that and cheers to chocolate. <laughs> Next up, I head back to New York to meet a pastry chef turning chocolate into edible art. Seeing fresh cacao turned into chocolate only whet my appetite for more. I couldn't wait to get back to New York to meet one chef designing show-stopping confections. 
I'm drawn to the incredible versatility and endless possibilities of chocolate. I get to express my love for flavors, colors, design, and artwork. Susanna Yoon is the founder and head chef of Stick With Me Sweets in New York City. How are you? It's so nice to meet you. She's best known for her handmade bonbons. They're truly a treat for all the senses. With over 20 gorgeous and uniquely flavored varieties to choose from, I couldn't wait to see what sweet surprises Susanna had in store. I am shook by how stunning these are. <laughs> Pieces of jewelry that you get to eat. Yes. So I have a few. I have in mind for you to try. Okay. The matcha, black sesame, calamansi marine pie. I almost don't want to eat it, it's so pretty. <laughs> if you take a bite, you can look inside and see the layers. It looks like a tiny key lime pie. And now, the moment we've been waiting for. It's our black sesame with mango and passion fruit jam on top. So pretty. This flavor was inspired by roasting black sesame seeds with my grandmother. Susanna, the daughter of Korean immigrants, was born and raised in Seattle. With two working parents, her grandmother was an integral part of her upbringing and one of her biggest inspirations when it comes to food. I remember my grandmother's favorite line was, have you eaten yet? I would just watch her hands move so gracefully as she prepared each dish. And the aromas in the house were always so captivating. What were some of your grandma's philosophies when it came to food? It's about variety. Her table was set up with so many different little dishes. Would you say that your grandmother's love language was gift giving? Absolutely. It was cooking, feeding people, and giving people her, her delicious treats that she would make. And that's what you do here, which is so cool. Yes. <laughs> How the heck did you end up in New York? The day my grandmother passed away, I felt like I had lost a part of my heart. And I was actually not in the culinary world, but it was in that moment I vowed to my grandmother that I wanted to be more like her and bring joy to people through food. Did you always have a passion for dessert? Yes, I ate chocolates every day. I don't even know why my dad allowed me to do that. Susanna's passion for sweets took her to the pastry program at the International Culinary Center in New York City. After graduation, she landed a coveted job at the renowned French eatery, Café Balloude. What was it like breaking into the industry as a woman who pivoted her career? It was marked by a lot of fear and some excitement. I was pretty quiet and reserved, but after working just like a few days in the kitchen, I quickly realized the need to be more vocal and assertive. Susanna then honed her skills at Thomas Keller's Michelin starred per se, developing an eye for precision. Talking or even smiling was not really encouraged. The kitchen was really quiet. Everyone was super focused. In those high intensity environments, how did you keep your head held high? I didn't. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't keep my... <laughs> my head was always down. I was always working. It was just really mentally and physically demanding. But working 15-hour days didn't deter Susanna. Her ultimate goal was to be her own boss. In 2014, she opened her own shop, a cozy Nolita store called Stick With Me. Her mission, to provide memorable gifting moments with elegant bites just like her grandmother. I feel like beautiful and delicious chocolate should be available for all of life's special moments. Originally, all production and sales were run out of the Nolita store. But during the pandemic, when many food businesses faced closure, Susanna's online sales spiked. Susanna opened her Brooklyn factory two years ago. When she started out, Susanna sold about 15,000 boxes a year. Today, they're on track to sell 70,000. Some people may not know that you have a second location. Yes. And it's in Korea. Yes. I really wanted to reconnect with my heritage and be able to share a new chocolate experience from New York City with Seoul, Korea. These views are crazy. At her factory, Susanna believes that to do their best work, her staff needs to feel their best. I wanted a positive space for my staff 
If you want to like brainstorm some fun and creative ideas, you need to feel good every you day. You do. Even the industrial kitchen is laid out with shorter frames in mind. I basically built the kitchen so that I could reach everything. It's more built for female chefs. Susanna's staff, which happens to be all women, appreciates the environment fostered by their boss. She always wants us to have a good work-life balance. I would never really want to ask off for any other like places that I've worked at before. Right? Yeah, but I think definitely whatever you value is super important for. Susanna also provides regular training sessions so employees can keep enhancing their skills. No longer confined by someone else's rules, Susanna can let her imagination run wild. The lighter color, milk chocolate, darker color, dark chocolate, and white chocolate. Those were the three colors I got to use when I was working at Per Se. And so when I left, I wanted to make it more colorful, more vibrant. That vibrancy is exactly why her bonbons have received plenty of accolades. Even Oprah is a fan. Like any artist, Susanna and her team follow a painstaking process to create each bonbon. And it starts with the finest ingredients from around the world. We have to make a lot of orders from different places and different farms to get the perfect ingredients that we need. Vanilla beans sourced from Tahiti give confections a more floral flavor. Matcha is hand-carried from Japan, and buttery Elliott pecans are shipped right from Georgia. It can take up to two days to make a batch of these intricate bonbons. I know this is cheesy, but I feel like a kid in a candy <laughs> store, Susanna. I couldn't wait to put my bonbon making skills to the test with one of the shop's best sellers. So we're gonna make the pecan pie bonbon. Each bonbon is decorated by hand. Susanna starts the process by splatter painting the mold. So we're gonna make it rain. Okay, let's make it rain. <laughs> So I like to put my arms up a little bit higher and then just let it gently drop. Next, it's onto the tempering machine where Susanna creates the silky smooth chocolate shell. So the goal is to make sure that the chocolate's inside the mold and not outside the mold. Okay. We're gonna turn on the vibrating table. It's gonna help us get all the air bubbles out. When you see it looks good, we're, it's time to create the perfect shell. Take a peek, make sure it's perfect, keep it level. Okay, I'm really nervous, but we're gonna crush it. Ah, and then stop. All right, hold on. You got it, you got it. And the sides. Guys, this is <laughs> crazy. Sensitive to temperature, humidity, and time, chocolate can be very difficult to work with. Many professional chefs, myself included, struggle to master this sweet. Susanna's chocolatiers work with her for months to learn each step in the bonbon making process. After the shells cool and set, it's time to pipe the layers of flavor. First up, a sea salt caramel. When you pipe, it's almost like a clock. Let's see if I can handle this. I can handle it. You can, you can do it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, next step is filling it with our golden candy pecans. All right, we made a pecan praline, and now we're gonna pipe this in. Okay, great. Okay, wish me luck. Oh, man. What would you say the most important step in the process is? Every step <laughs> is the most important step in the process. Speaking like a Michelin pastry chef <laughs> over here, my friend. <laughs> the filled bonbons refrigerate to set. And then it's time for the final step. A double seal of chocolate creates a perfect uniform shell. Wow. After a final rest in the climate controlled chocolate room, it's time for the big reveal. Okay, I'm so okay. excited. Oh, there's one stubborn one. one. There she is. They turned out gorgeous. Yes. These are so beautiful. How about we taste all of our hard work? Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. It's just so 
texturally satisfying. <laughs> After a hard day of making and tasting chocolates, I join Susanna's team for what they call family meal. The ladies gather once a week to celebrate their successes and relish in their fierce female workforce. I think there's a lot of kindness here. We all want to hear what the other ones have to say. What's the best piece of advice that uh, Chef Suzanne has given you? Really focus on like your mental health so that when you come to work, you can be the best that you can be. I could never show up to a dinner party empty-handed. So I put my own spin on one of Susanna's beloved bonbons, the black sesame, inspired by her grandmother. It was so good. You like it? So good, yeah. Creating special memories with food is definitely something I'm all about. It's that legacy of giving that continues to inspire Susanna. What do you think your grandmother would think of this place? She was always proud of me. I would bring her a cup of water and she would say, oh my God, this water that you brought for me tastes like honey. <laughs> and so I know that she would be looking down and um, feeling really happy about what I built here. I think we can all agree that chocolate is good for the soul. My sweet tooth is certainly satisfied, but it's these ladies behind the bean who are making a lasting impression and taking chocolate to new heights. From Puerto Rico to right here in New York City, the women of the chocolate world know what it means to break the mold. new evidence this morning that the so-called Mediterranean diet, it can sharply reduce your chances of developing dementia, even if you have a genetic risk for it. NBC News medical contributor Dr. Natalie Azar here, is here to tell us about the new study and that could have us eating healthier. What encouraging news. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Anything can fight back against dementia and Alzheimer's, but this is a diet that a lot of people have been on or are on. Absolutely, Hoda. It is definitely another vote for the Mediterranean diet. So this study looked at over 60,000 individuals who were middle-aged um, and followed them for about nine years. Ooh. And there were close to 900 cases of dementia. People who followed strictly a Mediterranean diet had almost a quarter lower chance of developing dementia. And as you said in the lead, they actually took into account genetic risk, and that didn't even make a difference, which is really, really encouraging because you think that certain things are predetermined, mm -hmm. but this is the kind of thing that we can all actually implement in our lives. Can you remind everybody what the Mediterranean yeah. Yeah. diet is and, and then why it might have affected something to do with your brain health? Right. So, so the Mediterranean diet, think plant-based, okay? Ooh. So we're talking about fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, seeds, legumes, things like that, fish, seafood, olive oil. You want to limit or eat in moderation mm -hmm. red meat, eggs, poultry, cheese, yogurt, and sweets. Why is it? Well, you know, some people have said maybe it's not a direct effect on the brain, but maybe because it's reducing inflammation, it's, mm -hmm. it has antioxidants, that it's helping your heart health, that helps the blood vessels in the brain. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know exactly why, but nonetheless, this is very compelling. It was such a large study. Besides the, the change of diet, are there yes. ways that, that folks might be able to reduce the likelihood that they develop Alzheimer's or, or dementia? Absolutely. And all of these things, again, are lifestyle changes, getting adequate sleep, controlling your blood mm -hmm. pressure, controlling cholesterol your blood glucose, staying physically and mentally active. These are all things that can help with cognitive decline and hopefully stave off the risk of dementia. Okay, Thanks. thank Thanks. you, Dr. Thanks. Natalie. Thanks. Diet can play a big part in our ability to stay sharp and may even reduce your risk of cognitive diseases such as Alzheimer's. Here's a look at how the foods we choose can impact our ability to focus and function. We have all felt that dreaded mid-afternoon slump and it turns out there's a reason for it. What's happening in the brain when you feel this slump is it doesn't have the fuel it needs. The fuel that you're providing all have an impact on whether or not your brain will be as sharp as it humanly can be. That fuel comes in the form of food. 20% of the calories you consume go toward brain function, which needs specific nutrients to focus and function fully throughout the day. What goes into our bodies is almost certainly going to reflect itself in our brains. We're in an era now where we can get all kinds of processed, packaged foods that aren't necessarily what our bodies have evolved to deal with. 
To keep our health maximal, what you want to do is eat naturally. Research shows that people who eat a primarily plant-based diet are more likely to experience brain-boosting benefits, both short-term and long-term. The clearest evidence of benefit and risk reduction revolves around the MIND diet and the Mediterranean diet, which have both been studied quite well and show good effects. MIND diet stands for Mediterranean Intervention for Neurodegenerative Delay. It's broken down into a list of healthy foods like leafy greens, beans, nuts, whole grains, fatty fish, having about two servings of berries every day actually help to reduce cognitive decline by about two and a half years. Of course, there are foods to limit too. Things you want to avoid are going to be anything that is high in sugar, refined carbohydrates, so white pasta, white bread, obviously any sugary drinks. You want to limit the amount of overall saturated fat that's coming into your diet, typically coming from meats, animal products such as high fat dairy, things of that nature. 75% of the brain is made up of water, so what you drink is important too. Many times when people say they feel drained of energy or they're hungry, they're just dehydrated. Water is really critical as a drink. Coffee is great. Any kind of tea will have benefit. In the short term, there's no doubt that caffeine improves processing speed and helps with attention. A lifetime habit of caffeinated beverages may be protective against brain disorders later. Psychologically, people see the effects of a diet shift pretty rapidly. They start feeling better, they start having more energy, and this cascades into all sorts of other things in life, like how happy you are and how well you're sleeping at night. So when people shift their diets so that they're eating well, it really matters. A brain-healthy diet may also help prevent cognitive diseases, like Alzheimer's, which is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. 64-year-old Debbie Morden has a history of Alzheimer's in her family. My father had Alzheimer's for 12 years. His brother had Alzheimer's and three of his first cousins had Alzheimer's. Debbie has tested positive for an Alzheimer's gene and is taking a proactive approach. She's seen an Alzheimer's prevention specialist who recommended the MIND diet. That gene means I have a higher risk of Alzheimer's. I went on basically a vegan diet except for fish. I've cut out dairy and I'm eating more grains and more legumes, increasing olive oil and a daily intake of berries and also lowered alcohol to four ounces of red wine a couple times a week. After eight months, Debbie has significantly lowered her cholesterol and hopes her new diet will ward off cognitive deterioration. I watched my father for 12 years decline. The whole thing with, with Alzheimer's, it starts developing 10 to 20 years before you see signs of it. So you want to start preventing it as early as possible. I'm making the changes because I want to live a healthy life as long as I can and enjoy it. Whether you're 85 or you're eight, now is the time to start building that base. Diet can prevent certain things. And I never want to have a conversation with my patient where they've developed something and we didn't have the years to work into that prevention factor. It's something you have to commit to and do it for the long haul. We always say we want a brain span to match your lifespan. For more on the MIND diet, head to hodaandjenna.com.
Whitmuth Moore is the author of This Is Your Brain on Food, Dr. Uma Naidu. Welcome, Dr. Naidu. Hi, Dr. Naidu. Uh, thank you so much, Jenna and Hoda. I'm a big fan, so oh, I'm excited to be here. That thank is so you. sweet. Okay, you know what? I I sort of like know in theory how this works because I know when I eat terrible food the night before, I wake up the next day and I feel even worse. And my goal in eating that terrible food is to soothe myself at night. For eating. So there's a real direct correlation between your gut and your brain. Exactly. You know, Hoda, you'd be surprised to know that some people call the gut the second brain. Mm. And here's why. They have a profound influence on one another, and they actually have the same origin in the body. So I think that's something useful for people to know when they, you know, when they make a decision about what to eat. Mm. Okay. So w we wake up in the morning. Sometimes we have those days where we're feeling sluggish, yeah. we're not motivated. Yeah. And I've noticed that if I eat certain things... I feel yeah. worse. Yeah. So, but what can we eat to make us start our day on the right path? Mm -hmm. That's a great question because I think we're all feeling a little bit th of that these days. I like to add spices. So, you know, you could add things like black pepper, cinnamon, and ginger, which are actually ingredients of my grandmother's chai tea recipe, but mm. they're great to kind of liven things up. Also, things like saffron, which can be added. It's a great aromatic. It can be added to a risotto or adding, you know, things like rosemary and sage to a roasted to roasted veggies can help liven things up for you and make you because what you're trying to do is feel more alert and um, you know feel feel more energy as well. What would you say is it like the best breakfast if you want to start the day mm -hmm. right? So I actually love uh, either something like a chia pudding or, you know, chia pudding, a little bit of coconut milk and topped with um, lots of different nuts. And my favorite go-to nuts that are great brain foods are either hazelnuts or macadamia. And, you know, a simple thing like that that you can even make ahead is mm -hmm. a great way to, you know, you can plan for the week, uh, set out your little chia puddings and you have them ready to go. So we have been talking all morning about how people are more anxious than ever. Mm -hmm. What are some foods that can actually help soothe anxiety? Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I think the uncertainty is what's so difficult for people, and this is where fiber is your friend. Mm. Um, so adding in fiber-rich foods that you get from, you know, vegetables, um, certain berries, uh, beans, nuts, seeds, and legumes, those help to sort of even out your, um, your blood sugar levels because they break down more slowly in the body. But it's also important to know things to avoid when you're feeling anxious. Yes. And what I like to remind people about here is that there's sometimes hidden sources of caffeine that we don't think about, um, such as, you know, sodas that have caffeine or other beverages, and then things like, um, you know, chocolate could have caffeine. And mm -hmm. um, some over-the-counter headache pills as well. Mm -hmm. So you want, you want to try to avoid these if you're feeling super anxious and you're feeling stressed. What if you're feeling just down? You don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's a funk or whatever. And usually in those yeah. moments, that's when you go for the comfort yes, food that like really the take you down the rabbit hole. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's a long rabbit hole. So, so I, I like to suggest things that people can do right now. You know, adding prebiotic or probiotic rich foods, which are fermented foods, um, into your diet even right now can really help you and start to make a difference. Um, but, you know, I also think the same thing with depression, Hold and Jenna. I think that also knowing things to avoid becomes super important. And here's where I want people to know that there are actually a lot of studies that show that sugar is associated quite profoundly with levels of depression. Mm -hmm. And um, things like, you know, nitrates, which you find in processed meats, um, are also uh, linked to depression. So maybe cut back on those foods and add back, you know, prebiotic rich foods and probiotics, which are usually fermented foods, like, like kefir, unsweetened, and things like that. Like what, what were the pre or probiotic foods that are, we can try? So prebiotic foods are like garlic, leeks, onions, um, you know, it's different types of vegetables. And these feed the good bugs in your gut and help and really help you stave off symptoms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then probiotics are usually usually a supplement, but fermented foods um, are rich in these active cultures and things like miso, kimchi, unsweetened kefir, sauerkraut, um, kombucha mm. are all good options for you. Oh, okay. So I think a lot of people are having a hard time sleeping. Mm -hmm. Some I, I used to drink chamomile tea before mm -hmm. bed. Let's talk about things that are good for sleep and then mm -hmm. the benefits of chamomile tea. Absolutely. So chamomile, you know, the great aroma really helps us to de-stress and it's well known. 
I also have another tip about de-stressing, which is turmeric with black pepper, a pinch of black pepper. And you can add it to a soup or smoothie. And why turmeric with a pinch of black pepper? It hits the high notes on so many conditions in mental wellness. So that's that's one of my go-tos. Okay. Great. Dr. Naidu, thank you so thank much. You. We appreciate you. Okay, are you ready to feel your best yet? If the answer is yes, we've got some power foods to tell you about that can improve your overall health and wellness. We're talking about immunity, sleep, brain health, all the things max. So Lugavere is a health and science journalist. His recent book is called Genius, Genius Kitchen. Kitchen. First of all, I love the fact that the things we need are right in front of us, right in the fridge, right in the supermarket that can actually help us physically. We're always taking pills if we have yeah. a problem. We're not working the front food end. Food is medicine. It's such yeah. a cool way to think yeah. about life, right? It is. I mean, yeah, food is so powerful. I mean, with, with every bite you take, you are essentially either feeding or fighting disease. And so I'm here to pre present some of what I think are the most powerful foods available to most most people in your average okay. supermarket. Okay. Mushrooms, yeah. they're all over the place. Yeah, so mushrooms can actually be used to balance immune function, to foster better immunity. Wow. So there are a few mechanisms here which are, are still being elucidated, yeah. but essentially some mushrooms create vitamin D, which can tamper down an overactive immune response. Mm -hmm. But I think most interestingly, mushrooms like mushrooms. lion's mane, which are typically pretty available, they actually create antioxidants that we produce in our own bodies, one of which is called glutathione. It's considered mm -hmm. the mother of all antioxidants. It helps to detox. Mm. And and reduce What's, oxidative which stress. Which one's lion's mane? This one? So, that's oyster, right? Yeah. So oh, we have. Is we that have, lion mane? That's not a lion's mane. No, mm. lion's mane actually has like a. It has the consistency of crab, fresh crab. It's oh. really, By really good. By the way, tasty. whatever this one is, it's really good. I want to keep eating it. Here's a tip. Actually, you don't want to rinse mushrooms. You just want to. You just oh, want eat to them a little dirty. dirty. Cook them. Yeah, eat them a little dirty with some nice uh, okay. butter or olive okay, oil. Okay, move to on to kiwi. kiwi. So here we've got kiwi. Kiwi can be used to promote better digestion and good sleep. So we're seeing clinical trials Ooh, now wow. that two kiwi a day. Yeah, actually, in a head-to-head -head match against psyllium husk. <laughs> Kiwi has been shown to, to help uh, reduce constipation, which a lot oh. of people suffer from, and also, <laughs> yeah, can, can help fight constipation and also improve sleep, too, before Should bed. Should you, skin on or off? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked. Eat the kiwi with the skin, what? because skin the skin on. contains Skin's more good. vitamin E. Doesn't, take a and, I've never yeah. eaten a kiwi a with skin. Yeah, it's good. People think that it's weird, but it's, it's actually bad. really tart and delicious. Mm -hmm. You like it's it? It's not bad. I don't it's know bad. that I could force my kids to eat. Wow, it's tart. It's good, tart. right? But it balances out the okay. sweet. But what, a, what if the kid done eat it? Is it okay, the middle stuff? Yeah, yeah. the middle is great, too. The middle is great, okay. too. Okay, let's get to these fruits. Okay, so here we have brain foods. So these foods are loaded with compounds called plum. flavonoids, which are plant pigments that are usually in the outer skin. We've got apples, we've got citrus, we've got plums. Berries are a great mm. source of flavonoids. They've been shown to boost BDNF in the blood, which is a, a miracle protein that actually helps to support healthy neurons. BDNF, it's BDNF, called? BDNF, yeah. Okay. We produce it in our muscles when we work out. One of the reasons why exercise is so great, but this has actually been shown to boost it. So you never know. An apple a day might keep the neurologist doesn't, away. Doesn't matter red or green, whatever? No, it doesn't matter. Okay. High Got flavonoid it. foods. Okay, right. let's there go to go. strawberries mm. and almonds. Yeah, so these are anti-aging foods. Strawberries are rich in a compound called fisetin, which is known as a senolytic. So we have in our bodies, all of us, especially as we age, uh, cells called senescent cells okay. that secrete pro-inflammatory compounds that can make, make our skin look uh, more aged. And so these actually fight aging by helping to kill off those <laughs> zombie cells. Yeah. You can actually no, thank you, zombie scales. Mm. And actually, this is actually also very interesting. Strawberry leaves are rich in caffeic acid, which is a very powerful antioxidant. So eat the leaf? So when you yeah, eat you a eat strawberry, you eat the whole yeah, thing? Yeah, I do. And almonds are loaded with magnesium, which 50% of Americans don't consume adequate uh, amounts of. And magnesium can help fight DNA damage. Wow, so, this is again, crazy. Yeah. Okay, hit us with the last one. Okay, so here we've got dark chocolate and coffee. So this, I mean, people are probably at home rejoicing. It, I am. Loaded with compounds called flavanols. When you buy dark chocolate, you want to make sure that the cacao percentage is high. And it's not, it hasn't been processed with alkali, also known as Dutch processed, which greatly degrades oh. the health quality of the uh, chocolate. And then from, a, uh, from the standpoint of coffee, coffee's long been associated with better cardiovascular yeah. health, reduced risk for Alzheimer's disease and other neurodegenerative conditions. And we now know that, there, that caffeine actually can help promote better lipids in the blood, so better, like, uh, healthier cholesterol levels. Wow.
Welcome back. It is Super Food Friday. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer is back, and this week she has not one, not two, but three surprising superfoods that could help boost brain power and enhance your memory. This is exciting. First of all, the role that food plays in terms of our, our memory, in terms of our brain health and all that. Which is a great question. So there's a lot of studies that we have now that are showing that there are certain compounds within foods and beverages okay. that can help to slow cognitive decline and also boost memory, boost brain power it's all good and I'm gonna feature three today let's start with the blueberries blueberries you can tell from their color they are packed with antioxidants and in fact that they rank number one when the USDA did like a huge rally of all of the fruits and vegetables number one, number one. Okay. and they get their blue color from something called anthocyanins that's the name of the antioxidant and we know that that helps to boost brain power there's actually even a Harvard study that shows if these women they ate one cup a week that's not a lot mm -hmm. and they had significant increase in their smarts they did all sorts of tests and stuff how easy is that right oh, yeah. you could throw them in pancake batter and muffin yeah. batter on your oatmeal but this is my favorite way classic peanut butter and jelly sandwich swap out the sugary jam oh, and just put whole blueberries and this is so fun out. for your kids huh. no they stick because of the peanut butter mm -hmm. and then um, for kids you can make a tic-tac-toe board oh, this is like the ultimate pre-exam morning breakfast I love that. <laughs> that's a great idea so cocoa powder is the next superfood cocoa powder is like the king of dark chocolate because it's a hundred percent dark chocolate mm -hmm. and they contain something called flavanols it's another type of antioxidant that we know can keep your blood vessels healthy and elastic, which means a healthy heart. And a healthy heart equals a healthy brain, because when your blood vessels are open and elastic and healthy and happy, all of the nutrition goes right up to your brain. You get more oxygen, you get more nutrients. So what I'm gonna show you that you can do is add, it's not sweet, cocoa powder is not sweet and indulgent like mm -hmm. dark chocolate, but you could do a lot of things with it. Okay. If you take some and you mix it into, this is just a vanilla low-fat yogurt. Yogurt. Mm -hmm. Two ingredients, and you've Perhaps now some. made a brain boosting chocolate pudding. So, my kids oh. will just think they're having chocolate pudding, just and really. Tell them it's chocolate pudding. Really? Oh, wow. Mm. Isn't that good? Two like ingredients. Now this Doesn't get easier than that. This is the most right. surprising superfood to me. Coffee? Coffee. Every single week we are hearing more and more studies showing that yeah. the benefits in terms of brain health for coffee. We used to think it was just the caffeine. We know yeah. that caffeine keeps you alert, it wakes you up, mm -hmm. but it's a combination of the caffeine and the antioxidants within coffee uh. that can help boost brain power. And that's really good news because a lot of people are caffeine sensitive. Mm -hmm. So that means decaf gives you these health perks as well. And all you need is about a half a cup to four cups a day to reap these benefits. So you're making a, a breakfast co uh, cookie. I developed, I'm calling this <laughs> my so exclusive. I'm so excited about these cookies. <laughs> these are brain boosting breakfast coffee cookies. This is exclusive to okay. the Today Show. Just to the Today yeah. Show. I'm going to put right. them on Instagram and I'm going to put them on our website. So for the dry ingredients, it's um, whole grain flour. We have cocoa powder, some mm -hmm. cinnamon, and we have a little bit of uh, baking powder. And some salt and some salt, kosher salt. Now I'm adding instant coffee, oh. boom, oh. right just, into the batter. We're gonna so mix. I thought that was connected to this, but no, this is just instant coffee. This is just instant okay. coffee. You could also use finely powdered regular coffee mm -hmm. as well, but it's easy to buy the instant. So okay. Yeah, What's so the wet ingredients are a lot of usual breakfast foods. I have Greek yogurt, I have eggs, I have mashed banana, and a little bit of honey. You mix oh, these two okay. things in, then you fold in your blueberries, because all three superfoods are in here. That's Go amazing. taste a cookie. See what you think. Right. Right. And then a little bit of chocolate there. chips. Each cookie is only oh, 80 wow. calories and comes packed with protein and fiber. So you could have three with a cup of coffee for oh, breakfast. Wow. Fantastic. Wait, Joy, thank three you cookies. so much. Three cookies for breakfast. For these recipes, go to today.com health, and we'll be right back. Cheers. Oh, oh my goodness.
we're going to tell you about five foods to add to your diet to help improve memory, energy levels, and sleep. Dr. Taz Batia is an integrative wellness physician and host of the Superwoman Wellness Podcast. But this is for everybody. Dr. Yes. Taz, good morning. Good morning. So you're saying before we get to it that, that if you start incorporating these into your diet, you'll see results relatively quickly? The beauty about kind of getting your diet right is usually within three weeks, oh. you can see a change. And it can be as quiet as you have more sleep and you have more energy to like you're on and you're focused and ready to go. Wow. What is about these foods that we're going to look at here? What is about these particular foods and, and other items that give the brain that boost? Well, what, why we have picked these foods is because we call them superfoods. They just have a ton of nutrients for every serving. Okay. So they're, they're efficient, right? So if you're trying to get these nutrients in, this is an efficient way to do it to keep your brain and your energy superpower. All right. Our first super ingredient is yes. magnesium. Where do we find that? So magnesium, I always call the miracle micronutrient. It helps us with sleep. It helps calm us down. It helps balance serotonin. Try that. It's Believe so it or not, dark chocolate is going to be oh, one of our production. best sources. An ounce of it has about 64 milligrams of magnesium okay. in it. Legumes are great. They come in at about 70 milligrams. A tablespoon of flax, which you see right here, mm -hmm. at about 40. Avocado also has magnesium, but less than the dark chocolate. So you, so you have this recipe, these little balls. What are in those then? So it's a lot of cacao, which has a lot of the magnesium mm -hmm. and the antioxidants in it, almond butter for the healthy fats, flax seeds, mm -hmm. mix it up together, super easy, has a little bit of oat too. A little dark chocolate in there. A little dark there. chocolate in there. So it's it's yummy, yummy, right? Yeah. Yeah. And not too much calories no, either, Not too many it? calories. No. So we have a chocolate many craving, calories. you can go for Let's it. Let's talk collagen here, because yes. collagen, you say, is, it's actually naturally occurring in our bodies. We all have it. We've all got collagen. It's naturally occurring. We know it for skin and health, hair and overall health, but it actually helps support the gut lining, helping us to absorb the nutrients. So many people are eating healthy, but they're not absorbing what they're eating. Collagen comes in and helps us with that, helps the brain, helps energy. It's in a lot of naturally occurring proteins. So we've got salmon here, for example, and chicken. You know, these are things that are a great way to get salmon in. This looks like chicken this stock. Is, How would you use it? This is bone broth. Bone so broth. Some people oh. will just drink bone broth and get a great Roker, source Roker of collagen. Try a swig. Roker does Wash that and then if, down. You're, if you're vegetarian, you can get some collagen from your vegetables as well. It's just that we get a lot more through our proteins and through our bone broth. Okay. Uh, uh, these are cruciferous. Those are can cruciferous. you only get the collagen from cruciferous? Not vegetables? necessarily. Okay. No, no, you can get it from other vegetables as well. It's just not as dense. All right, this is a new one on me. Choline. What is that? Why is it good? So choline, I feel like, doesn't get enough press, and I'm so glad we're talking about it today. So choline actually is a nutrient that comes in and coats all our nerves. So it helps us with learning, Never with memory, that. with hmm. focus. And we really want to get choline in our diet. So choline is naturally found in eggs. Eggs are one of the best sources. But you've got to eat the egg yolk. Okay. The yolk has the choline, has about 140 milligrams. We've got mushrooms and burgers here. Which one do you think has more choline? Mushrooms. Mushrooms. You guys win. Good yeah. job. So mushrooms actually have more choline. How than many a burger. eggs would you have to eat or mushrooms? Like what's a serving to get enough choline so any given day? Just, this is the beauty of eggs. One full egg, including oh. the yolk, will okay. do it. You need a cup of mushrooms. You actually need two burgers to get the choline. Okay. <laughs> so. Ooh, I love choline. Yeah. Mushrooms and eggs, I guess. There yeah. we go. Yeah. A mushroom yes. burger. This is something I've never heard of. Oh, ghee. I've heard of this. I've it's like butter or something. Ghee is uh, it's like butter. That's a great way to think about it. It's clarified butter. It's been used in Eastern systems of medicine for a really long time. And it's been used as a healing fat. Mm. And the reason is, is because ghee actually has less lactose, less casein. So if you've got somebody that's dairy intolerant, yeah. can't tolerate that stuff, they can usually tolerate ghee very well. But the secret superfood ingredient here is MCT, or medium chain triglycerides. That helps the brain. It helps the gut. It balances is everything living down here in the mm. gut and that is really the powerhouse the source of our energy so if we're not getting some of these healthy fats in that's one of the biggest reasons I see brain and energy start to go down. how do you get ghee in your diet I'm not looking to yes take a big old no bite we don't want that. you we, and we don't want you, you to do put that it on toast you can put it on toast literally all you need is about a quarter to a oh, half wait, of a sure teaspoon they see that. A tiny little bit tiny little teaspoon you don't need okay. a lot and you can spread it on something you, it also has a higher smoke point so you can bake and fry with it oh, as well okay. so you can use it as butter. Exactly. This is Shop All Day fan favorites. I'm Chassie Post. In Chassie's Closet, I'll share my favorite fashion pieces you'll want to add to your wardrobe. 
I'm Makon Jovo, and in Influencer Trends, I'm bringing you the experts who know it all. I'm Adriana Brock, and in Editor's Picks, I seek out new and notable products so you don't have to. Let's get shopping. I'm Chassie Post, and we're back with another episode of Shop All Day, and I'm sharing all the stuff we love and stuff shoppers love that we can't get enough of. These are all staples that are tried and true, from fashion favorites to even home essentials. And if you want to shop along with me, scan the QR code at the corner of your screen to check out everything in Chassie's closet. So let's start with one of my absolute favorite trends, brights. Here I've got another fabulous way that you can do brights, and that is with, I think, probably one of the most versatile and flattering style staples there is, and that is the bodysuit. And I have to tell you guys, this is such a good one and really affordable. It's from a brand called Mango Pop, and this fabric is really soft. And I mean, look at all of these colors, the hot pink, red, is a new way to do brights. This is one of this season's it colors, and I actually have this bodysuit, and I just feel so pulled together. You can wear it with really any bottom in your closet, from skirts to jeans. It works really well with all those new high-waisted styles we're seeing out there. So besides brights, you can also go with some of the modern neutrals. So burgundy, that's a color you're gonna see a lot of this season, which I like to call a new neutral. Also, they have beautiful navies and blacks if you wanna go you know, with an everyday piece. So next we have a bold and beautiful tracksuit. It's a two piece and I love a matching set. So matching sets are really big trends. It's especially an active wear. You can wear it together or you can break the pieces up and mix it in with the rest of your closet. And this is a really, really great two piece because you've got a fitted hoodie. I mean, how cute is that? Along with tapered, fitted, almost jogger slash legging. Such a good deal too for two pieces. And by the way, you see these hangers that we've got here? How fabulous are they? I mean, a great way to bring the trend into your closet. But they're not just for beauty. These are velvet hangers. And I've got to tell you, they're also one of my organizational secret weapons. It actually acts as a non-slip, so your clothes are going to stay on better. See how thin they are when I switched out my hangers and my closet to these? I could fit so much more in my closet. Well, they come in sets of 25 or 50 or even 100 in lots of different colors. Okay, so now let's talk about another bright star, and that is the Hoka Clifton 9. So this is the running shoe of the season, and women are obsessed because they are just so incredibly comfortable. I mean, look at this. Look at that sole. The brand says they actually added three millimeters to the stack height. I mean, look how thick that sole is, right? It's like walking on sunshine. You're never gonna wanna take these off. And I love the fun colors. So that's our brights. And now let's talk about a category that is near and dear to my heart. And that is exuberant and cheeky styles, both for home and fashion, along with really vibrant prints. And I love the intersection when home trends intersect with fashion trends. And you guys are not going to believe these genius rugs. So these are from a brand called Ruggable. And there is so much to love about these rugs. I mean, starting with the fact that these were designed in collaboration with Jonathan Adler, who is one of the most famous interior designers, furniture designers in the world. So that's enough to make me love it. But get this, these are actually washable. Yes, you can wash these plush, gorgeous rugs in a standard washing machine. How cool is that? So it's a two-part system. So it comes with a rug cover and a rug mat. And whenever you're ready to wash them, you just throw these in the washing machine and then reattach it to the rug pad. I just think these are genius. Look at these graphic prints. And, you know, Jonathan Adler is really known for his exuberant and sort of modern retro vibe. So this is a great way to just give your house a lift. Also, this gorgeous graphic rug that's in our new Shop All Day set is also one of the Jonathan Adler ruggables. It's just so chic. So now let's talk about a little bit of cheeky style for your sofa. So these 
are needlepoint pillows from Furbish Studio. I mean, these crack me up. I think they're hysterical. I really live for a sense of humor in fashion and home, and these are definitely conversation pieces. And so check it out. You can choose from all sorts of sayings. I mean, too much of a good thing is wonderful. Well, isn't that the truth? <laughs> or I got it all together, but I forgot where I put it. And then they have some, you know, really almost sentimental options like good night moon. I mean, how sweet would this be in a child's room? And I mean, look, the needlepoint, it's so kooky preppy, right? And I think you guys are gonna have a blast exploring Furbish Studios. So now let's talk about an eyewear collection from the queen of maximalism. I think one of the most inspiring style icons ever, and that is Iris Apfel. And so this is Iris's collaboration with the optical brand Zinni. Iris is known for her statement glasses and turns out statement glasses are a huge trend right now. So I think these designs are so exquisite and unique. There's so many different patterns and frame shapes. And what I think is really cool is that you can choose any of the frames and make them in readers, or you can make them in prescription lenses, or you can even make them sunglasses. One thing that I also think is really cool about Zenni is they'll personalize them for you just for a few dollars. They'll put them right there. And I think that's also really nice. I think one of my favorite things about this collection is that you can channel a little bit of Iris's adventurous spirit. She encourages us to have fun with style and that's what it's all about, right? Okay, so our last category is cool classics. And this season we saw a renewed focus on pieces that were wearable, you know, that had staying power, elevated takes on, you know, style staples. And I think you guys are really going to love what we found here. It doesn't get more classic than the cap toe ballet flat. And what's not to love about a ballet flat, right? But you add the cap toe and that's instant elevation. It really just raises it up a level. And I just feel like with this shoe, it adds instant polish to whatever you're wearing. And these are from Steve Madden. They're a really great example of the trend. And you can choose between two colorways, the tan and the black, which I'm telling you, you're going to see absolutely everywhere this season. And this is, the perfect neutral. It will go with every single thing in your closet. But I'm also really excited about this new colorway, denim cacto ballet flats. Denim is also a big trend in shoes this season. So look out for those as well. And I've got to say, these are also a little bit of an investment, but I say they are worth it. These are incredibly well made. Like we said, they're never going out of style, and the brand says they're also made out of real leather. Next up, how about a low-tech makeover for your high-tech smartwatch? I mean, look how cool this watch band is, right? Such an easy way to jazz up your smartwatch. So according to the brand, these are real leather, and you can see here, these are double wrapped. So I think it looks just kind of like a cool leather bracelet. And they're so easy to switch out. You just slide out your old watch band, slide in these. They come in lots of different colors, and I love this stitching detail. I mean, this is a high-end look without the high-end price tag. And last but not least, is there anything more classic than a crew neck cashmere sweater? I don't think so. So this is the Mongolian cashmere crew neck sweater. It is from the brand Quince. And guess what? It is $50. I mean, I didn't even know it was possible to get a, you know, a high quality cashmere sweater for $50, but I guess it is, right? So these are really, really soft. They're so lightweight. You can wear them all four seasons. I gotta say, these are cool, classic, and really, really cozy. If you'd like to add any of these pieces to your closet, you know what to do. Just scan the QR code to shop it all. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, the hottest social media trends in beauty and shop today's editor picks for home and tech. 
so don't go away. everyone, I'm Shop All Day contributor Makon Jovu, and today we are talking fan favorites when it comes to beauty. My friend and expert from Shop Today, Kamari Stewart, is here with us to share the pics that are taking over social media. And as a reminder, if you see something you like, just scan the QR code on the corner of your screen. I'm Mako. Hi, Kamari. Kamari, let's start with the first yes. product. This is the body wash. Tell me all about yes. it. Yes. Sonatarium has been so popular all over social media. Mm -hmm. This is their salicylic acid body wash. And salicylic acid, according to some dermatologists we've spoken to, say it's really good for body acne. Oh. So it's very gentle. You can use it on your face. You can use it on your body. And it's a beautiful multi-use product, perfect for dealing with body acne, keratosis pilaris, and things like that for smooth, exfoliated skin. Wonderful. And I see yes. also here that it's fragrance free. It is. I can't wait to try it. So now yes. that we've talked about the body wash, we need to yes. moisturize our body. Yes. This is from a brand that we know and we love. Yes. What is this stick? Okay, so we all know Vaseline. It is a classic. We yeah. had the giant tubs growing up, but now you can take it on the go. Oh. You've got this stick. You can hydrate your body anywhere. And for me, I love it because I have eczema on my hands. So I could just apply it really quickly, give myself some quick little hydration and then my hands are not sticky. You can take it on the go, you can use it on your arms. I love that I'm picturing myself at yes. my office, my elbows are a little yeah. ashy. I don't know about you, my skin gets super dry in the winter. Yes. So I love having little products like this to take on the go. Yes, and you can just throw it in your bag and it's really easy. And it also leaves you with a little bit of shine too. So mm -hmm. you've got hydration and you've got a little glow to you at the end. Is it too soon to start thinking about holidays? I think this Never. would make like a great stocking stuff. Right? Never too soon. Okay, I'm Never obsessed. too soon. And yes. I like that it has no scent. So yes. I'm a fan of that. All right. So yes. Let's move on to the next fan favorite. We're talking about lip stains. Is it a lip gloss? What makes yes. this one so exceptional? Well, it's a lip stick, and Revlon is a classic mm -hmm. brand, classic brand. This is my own lipstick that I've used. I tried this for our first ever Shop Today Beauty Awards. Tell me. Okay, earlier this year. It's amazing. It's the shade Ingenue. Mm -hmm. I've never worn a red lip before. You've never worn never. a red lip? Why? You I just... was nervous, okay. you know? I never worn a red lip. It seemed a little too bold, like I wasn't ready, but I tried tried this, I fell in love. And it swipes on so easily, okay. and it lasts all day. Can I try it out? Absolutely, yeah. Does it come on matte, or is it shiny? 
For me, I feel like it went on with just enough of a glow, oh. but it's matte enough to last the entire day. Okay. It'll last through talking, through eating, through drinking. I love it. And okay. that's that's my favorite shade, so. Oh, yeah. now do you wear a liner with it or can you just apply it? Because I think with red lip, you don't want it like to get all over your face, right? right? Yeah. Right. I just apply and it does leave your lips looking really full. It's perfect for beginners. It's so pretty. Again, yeah. I love winter reds. They just look yes. great with any outfit. Like if I'm wearing athleisure and yes. I put on a little pop of like red, it looks so beautiful. Yes. I like this. Okay, so, so now we have that. I'm gonna put that to the side for yes. a second. If I'm doing a full, or maybe even a casual mm -hmm. sort of makeup look, I want to use lashes or I want to use a little bit of mascara. What do you have for us in that department? Okay, if you want to use lashes, but maybe you haven't tried it before yep. or you're not certain about how to do it, mm -hmm. this kit is my favorite. I love it. <laughs> my best friend's obsessed with it. My makeup artist loves it. And what these are, instead of an entire lash strip, they're just individual lashes. I gotta tell you, I okay. am so afraid of using individuals. I don't know how to use them. I prefer the strips. Why do you prefer the individuals? I feel like for me, these are just less intimidating than Ooh. having to line up an entire strip along my eye. Yeah, they're super easy to take out if you just take these tweezers. Okay. And you can pull out, they have three different lengths, short, medium, and long. Oh, I see it right here. Yes. So you start with the short and then go Yes, you can long? start with the short on the inner corner and then work your way outward to the long as long as you'd like. So for me right now, I have short on my inner corners and then I have mediums on the middle to outer corners. Gorgeous. They're so easy. Wonderful. Uh, speaking of mascara, you also yes. brought uh, another fan favorite. I of did. And this gives you volume, right? Yes, okay. volume. So this ColourPop mascara is super popular on TikTok. It has over 9 million views on its hashtag. People love it because they say it gives them this extension-like feel without having to actually commit to extensions. Right. <laughs> it just takes a few swipes. Okay, I gotta pick it up so and see affordable. it here. We're actually supposed to switch out our mascara more often than we know, so I yes. like that this is one that we can try out. Does it come in different colors or is it just the black? It comes in black and brown, so really good staple colors you can wear all year long. Oh. If you want, yeah. The wand is small too, so that makes it easier to kind of yes. catch the lashes. We both have falsies. Yes. Can you use it on your falsies and on your natural lash too? Yes, you can. So that's the great thing about both of these, so that you can put your mascara of choice over your falsies to kind of bl help blend them out a little bit more, or you can just wear them on your own. This is so yeah. cute. I love the brown for like a day off yes. where I'm not really going into the office, but I just want a little extra glam. So yes. I like that it comes in different colors. All simple. right, so what do we have here? Are yes. we talking about the spray? We are. Why should we yes. apply a spray when we're doing our makeup routine? Yes. Well, you want your makeup to last, right? You spend all this time putting your look together, you know, putting on your foundation, your blushes, your eyeshadows. You want it to last longer than when you leave the house, right? Yeah. So a setting spray will help your makeup sit right on your face and not move. Okay. Okay. So for me, I have oily skin. Okay. And it is very hard to find a setting spray that actually keeps my makeup in place. And this is the one that does it for me. Can I try it out? So Absolutely. I have dry skin. Does this work on all skin it types does. or is it just for uh, oily skin? It works for all skin types. Ooh. I love it. And to show you how Ooh. much I love it, this okay. is my own that's <laughs> almost empty. I use it all the time. I use it in extreme temperatures. Wow. Okay, I use it on vacation, in Aruba, super hot, mm -hmm. but my makeup stayed in place. Absolutely love it and it's so affordable. Can you use it before you apply your makeup or do you only use it after to set your makeup in place? Yeah, so this is actually a primer, a set, and a refresh spray. Ooh. So you can use it before you put your makeup on. You can use it to set your makeup once you're done. Mm -hmm. And then if you have drier skin and throughout the day, you wanna, you know, give yourself a little refresh, give yourself a little glow, you can pump a few spritzes of this and it'll get you going. This, it smells, it has a like a light little scent to it as yeah. well. I just sprayed it again to set my makeup and yeah. also as a refresh, so I like yes. that we can do all those different things with it. Yes. Love this one as well. Amazing. All right, we also have something for the eyes as well, we if you suffer from dry eyes, which by the way, a yes. lot of people probably do staring at their screens mm -hmm. for hours and hours on time. So what does this product yeah. do? So this is one of my favorite products ever and we're gonna open this together. Let's do it. Because these are self-heating eye masks. Okay. okay, so we're gonna open these up. And the brand says what they do is they stimulate the natural oil glands in your eyelids. Uh -huh. It's stimulating those oil glands and helping you, you know, if you're staring at a screen all day. For me, I wear contacts. Contacts and staring at a screen all day. Right. By the end of the day, my eyes are so tired and so dry and they have these little ear loops. Okay. You just rip them open and then you can put them over your ear 
you only need to wear it for about 15 minutes. 15 right? minutes, okay, 15 so at minutes. the end of the day. End of the day, no contacts in if you wear them mm -hmm. or anything like that. But I like to put them on to relax before sleep. Oh. You know, before bed, you just okay. pop them over your ears, put them on, 15 minutes, and if you feel they're starting to heat up, Cover. it's so nice. Um, and they're perfect for travel because they're disposable. You can take them on the go. If you're on a plane, you know, our skin gets really dry in planes, the same goes for your eyes. You just pop them on and you're good to go. It's great for eye strain. Oh, there we go. I got them on here. It's warm, but not hot. So it's like the perfect temperature. Like, I'm serious, Wait, so these are great. So nice. <laughs> these are fantastic. Oh. I live by these. These are so clever, and the fact that they come in the individual wraps is yes. also really great. So you can kind of give them out to your friends too. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And each box comes with about 10, so about you've got 10. plenty to go around. Awesome. Kamari, thank you for these. I see thank why you. they are fan yes. favorites. I'm a fan of a couple of them here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through the QR codes or links on our website. Next up, home and tech favorites from the Shop Today team. Stay with us. I'm Adriana Brock and this is Editor's Picks. Today's episode is all about fan favorites and I've got some of our all-time all-stars for your home that our team is obsessed with. And you know what to do. Scan the QR code on the corner of your screen with your smartphone to shop along with me. Okay, an easy way to upgrade your home is with lighting. So lighting can make the mood, it can set the tone whether you have guests over or you're just enjoying a nice night in. I really love the GE smart bulbs. I have these all over my lamps at home, whether it's my nightstand or my floor lamps in the living room. This is so genius because you don't need a light switch. Everything's controlled from your phone. So you just hook up the app to the GE light bulb and it's as easy as turning it on and off. And the best part is you can control the brightness level from your phone as well. So if you have guests over, you're having a dinner party, you keep it nice and bright, if you're at home just chilling out, reading a book, watching TV, you could set the dimness a little bit lower. Another thing I really love to do with these bulbs is connect it to my Google Home or my Alexa so I can use voice commands to turn them on and off. 
Another cool way to upgrade your lighting is with these awesome wireless globes. And I love them. They're so lightweight. They're so easy to connect. And this is a great way to create lighting, whether it's in a kid's room, you can use them indoor and outdoor too. I kind of love setting them when you're having people over as a centerpiece, it could be really fun. And again, like I said, using the app, all you have to do is control the lighting. You can change the color to anything you want, literally. Look at all these colors. The options are endless. You can go green, you can do, I'm gonna choose a pink color right now. See, so easy to use. And then you can also control the brightness level. And according to the brand, one charge lasts six hours. I don't know about you guys, but I love scents in my home. So I want every time someone walks in to have a signature fresh scent that they smell when they come into my home. It sets the ambiance, it's welcoming, it's refreshing. It's a smart diffuser and it's genius because all you have to do is plug it in and again, control everything in our home with our phones. You download an app and it's so easy to control. You can load up to two of the scents into one. So you can set schedules and reminders and a ton of different settings on there, including how intense you want the scent to be. Another thing I really love about this is that I don't have to use candles because I have a small kid at home, I also have a dog, and I don't want open flames at my house. So this thing is really great. Um, another really cool thing that the brand does is they team up with like a lot of high-end fragrances. So you can get fragrances from brands like Homesick, Anthropology, and they're really cool because a little bit goes a long way. According to the brand, each one lasts for about 100 hours depending on average use. And like I said, you can load two of these on here. So what I like to do is I'll have one in the foyer in the entryway. And then when I wanna plug in a different scent, I'll take that one to the other room and get that one going. And it's so easy to use with the app. And moving on to home entertainment. So if you are looking to upgrade your TV, whether it's a new TV or an old one, the Roku 4K is amazing. It's the Express Stick and it's a really small but mighty gadget. I love it because this little thing not only streams really fast with Wi-Fi connection, but if you have a 4K TV or an HDR TV, it's gonna give you that same resolution on your streaming as you get on your regular television. So you're not gonna compromise picture quality over this little guy. Another really cool thing about the Roku, when you're unlocking so much streaming content, we're talking thousands of channels and thousands of movies and TV shows, you can use the voice remote to really navigate and get what you want. So there's no more just sitting around and scrolling. Whether you wanna watch reality TV or an action movie, you just say it into the voice remote and it'll help guide you to what you wanna watch. Another small but mighty gadget that we really love at Shop Today is this Bluetooth transmitter. So this is really good if you have older devices in the home that may not have Bluetooth capabilities. This instantly acts as a receiver and a transmitter. So we have our producer's record player right here, which doesn't have Bluetooth capabilities. And the built-in audio here, these speakers, aren't the loudest. So she uses this little guy to connect it to a sound bar or a wireless speaker so she can listen to her records and get the audio that she really, really wants. Another great way to use this is to plug this into a TV that you have at home and you can connect your wireless earbuds or your headphones. I really like using this when I'm in my bedroom and my husband might be sleeping, but I wanna watch my TV. So I'll go ahead and plug in my Bose earphones or my earbuds into it and I can watch TV without disrupting my partner. Another fun hack that you can do with this is bring it on an airplane. So if you wanna connect those earbuds or those noise canceling earphones that you spend so much money on and then you can't use them on an airplane entertainment center, bring it with you and you'll have instant Bluetooth connection. Okay, and last but certainly not least, I am so obsessed with this one. It is the Bird Buddy Smart Feeder. And you're probably thinking like a bird feeder, this is not your average bird feeder. It uses AI technology to give you a live stream of all your visitors. It sends you photos and fun facts about them. What I really like too is that it gives you instant alerts too. So if you get an instant alert, you can live stream. It, and if you miss them, of course, it'll send you a nice little postcard straight to your phone. And the Bird Buddy also comes with a lifetime membership to their app, which has endless facts about all your favorite birds. It also comes in two colors to fit your style. How cute are those birds? It's been so much fun showing you our favorites in fashion, beauty, and home. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Tune in next week for another episode of Shop All Day. 
Thanks for watching. Sponsored by Walmart. What up, y'all? Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. Pasta is a staple for so many weeknight meals. It's easy to make, pretty hard to screw up, and oh so satisfying. I'm making pillowy soft ricotta gnocchi with peas and parm in a buttery sauce. And I'm cooking up a creamy chicken stroganoff with baby bella mushrooms. And I'm whipping up a spicy vegan pasta alla vodka. So start boiling some water. It's time to use that noodle. And let's get cooking. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor, Walmart, by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. I have to admit, pasta is one of my go-to comfort foods, so I am very excited to share this recipe with you. The first thing we want to do is take our gorgeous ricotta and actually lay it out in a thin layer on paper towels. Since the ricotta is the base of our dough, we need to remove some of that moisture so it ends up really nice and light and fluffy rather than dense. We are going to let this sit for about 12 to 15 minutes just to make sure that the paper towel absorbs that moisture, but lucky for me, I made one before. And here is how it ends up looking when it is done. Stunning. Okay, so now let's just make our dough. We have our ricotta right here. Plop it right on in. So we have two large eggs here. I'm going to crack them right into our bowl. One cup of finely grated Parmigiano Reggiano cheese and some kosher salt, just to awaken the flavor. Before we add in our flour, we are going to delicately mix it all together. So it creates a really light, fluffy consistency. So now that this is looking really beautifully mixed together, that is when we know it is time to start adding in our flour. It's really important here to add your flour in a quarter cup at a time because we don't want to develop too much gluten but we also wanna make sure that our ricotta stays nice and fluffy. I'm just going to delicately mix it until there are no more big bits of flour, and we'll just keep mixing. Our final quarter cup. There we go, looking good. Now it is time to shape our gnocchi. And then we're going to take our dough mixture, kind of form it into a bit of a, it feels so good. It feels like a baby's bottom. Can we use that in the final cut? It's what it feels like. Okay, and now we're going to dust the top with a bit more flour. And this is my favorite tool whenever I'm making pasta, also whenever I'm cooking to easily pick things up. It is called a bench scraper. It's typically used for decorating cakes, making sure you have a nice smooth line of frosting around your cake, but it does such a good job of picking things up and it also does a great job of cutting things really evenly. And we are going to cut this into quarters. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to roll this out into a beautiful snake that is about one inch thick. It feels so nice, <laughs> so soft. I like to cut off the end first, just because this end, it doesn't look as nice. And then what I'll do is I will just keep cutting little one inch pieces of pasta. And look at that. They look like little pillows, don't they? Look at how beautiful this is looking. And what we're going to do is we'll take that same bench scraper that we have, lift them up, and transfer them to a parchment lined baking sheet. All right, and we're just going to repeat this with our remaining pieces of gnocchi dough.
Looking good. Before we cook our gnocchi, I want to get started on the star of our sauce. This is a lemon butter sauce, so we are going to be using the zest and juice of two gorgeous lemons. And I'm going to show you my favorite way to prepare lemon zest. So we're just going to take the peeler and run it along lengthwise on this lemon, pulling the zest off of the lemon. So I'm just gonna remove any of this extra pith. And the reason why I'm removing this pith is because the pith is a bit bitter and we don't want any of that bitterness. And as you can see, I've stacked up all of this lemon into cute little, almost soldiers, if you will. Take your knife and rock it back and forth along that peel. It smells amazing. And you can see how beautiful these strips are. And then what we'll do is we'll take these shreds and turn them, and then we will run our knife across again to mince that lemon. And it took me a while to master these skills, let me tell you. It really all comes down to practicing over and over and over again. It's really repetition here. And now I'm just gonna take my knife and run through this a few more times. It's smelling absolutely amazing. Look at that zest though, I mean. It's like freshly fallen snow. <laughs> okay, let's clean up, get our water a boiling, and finish up this gnocchi. Our water is boiling, it is time to cook our gnocchi, and you gotta pay attention because this all happens pretty quickly. But I promise you, you have all of the tools to absolutely crush it. The first thing we wanna do is salt our water. I'm taking kosher salt. Okay, this is boiling beautifully, and we can use our fingers to plop these in, because let me tell you, they are light and pillowy, and dropping them all in at once is going to cause them to smush together. We want these to cook until they float to the top, okay? They basically tell us, they're like, hey, what's up? And then to save some time, we are actually going to take our frozen peas and we're gonna pop those in as well. So this pasta water is liquid gold. I call it unicorn juice whenever I'm cooking because all of the starch in the water itself is actually going to help bind our sauce together. And we're going to start adding in our cubed unsalted butter a couple tablespoons at a time. You really want it to be cold butter because our goal here is to really emulsify everything. Take a whisk. Start whisking everything up. The gnocchi's starting to float. And now we are ready to bring our sauce and our gnocchi together. I've actually turned off the heat. If it is too hot, it may cause your sauce to break. So just make sure you turn that heat off. Next up, we're going to add in half of our lemon zest. How good does this look? Okay, next up, we are going to slowly Add in our parm, keep on mixing it back and forth so that it melts in a nice even fashion. It is smelling so good. And as you can see, it is really looking super glossy. Mm, and it is tasting delish. So add in the lemon juice a little bit at a time. Again, we want to emulsify this in. We don't want to freak out the gorgeous sauce that we just worked so hard to build. It is coating all of those beautiful pillows of gnocchi. And now it is time to plate it up. Oh my gosh, you guys. How gorgeous does this look? Okay, a little extra parm some freshly ground black pepper. And then I'll take a little bit of fresh mint, 
A little drizzle of olive oil gives the pasta gorgeous sheen. And there you go, homemade ricotta gnocchi in a lemon butter sauce with peas and mint. I'm so excited to try this. It is melting in my mouth. The parm adds the perfect amount of nuttiness and saltiness. I don't have any other words to say except I know you're gonna love this. Mm. So good. When you hear stroganoff, you're probably thinking beef, but this creamy comfort food pairs incredibly well with chicken. But the best part about this dish is that it all comes together in one pot. Less mess is always a win in my kitchen. All right, so first what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our dry rub. I like to use a little bit of smoked paprika. You can use the regular paprika too, but I think smoke flavors just bring a lot more body to your recipes. And then a little bit of dry thyme, and then a little bit of garlic powder. Give that a good swish. All right, now let's move on to our chicken breast. Now I've just got some lean, skinless chicken breasts, and I'm not sure about you, but I like to cut mine up into smaller pieces. The reason why, it's gonna cook a lot faster. All right, y'all, let's add this to our bowl. Get your hands all up in there. Don't be scared to get your hands dirty. I'm gonna just rinse off the cutting board and wash our knife so we can prep the mushrooms. Okay, now I'm gonna be using some Baby Bella mushrooms. I think they're super delicious. I'm just gonna slice this into small slices just like this. So I've got a ton of mushrooms here and you're probably thinking, yo Kev, that's not gonna fit in my pan. Don't worry, mushrooms are kinda like spinach. Once you start cooking them and add some heat to them, they shrivel up really, really small. So they will fit, I promise you that. Our mushrooms are cut up. I'm gonna set these aside. And now we're gonna fire up our pan and get cooking. All right, we're gonna place this on a medium high heat. Okay, with it nice and hot, in goes the oil. This is a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of heart health, a little sprinkle of that. Then I like to grab some tongs and in goes our chicken. Ooh, I love that sizzle sound. We want a nice sear, a nice color on the chicken. There we go. You're gonna wanna cook this for about four to five minutes on each side, and then look at this. Oh, just lift it up. And look at that beautiful color on the chicken. Move it around a little bit. If you're feeling brave, you can go ahead and toss it. But again, this is a no mess recipe, so <laughs> the least amount of mess you can make in your kitchen, the better. This chicken is just about ready. I'm gonna move my mushrooms a little bit closer. And then I'm gonna use my tongs. I'm gonna start taking out the pieces of chicken. Oh my God, look at that. It's just looking so good. Kev, you did that. 
if you're not your best cheerleader in the kitchen, I don't know what you're doing. You gotta just give yourself a pat on the back. It smells so good, it looks so good. Exactly what we want. I set this over here. Now, I'm gonna add in the mushrooms now. Now, there's a lot of chicken flavor here. Ready, so we want that. Oh, we've got a good sear here. I'm just gonna wilt them just a little bit by using a little bit of our chicken broth. Just a little bit, just to create some steam. And also, this is gonna help to deglaze the bottom of our skillet as well. I'm gonna get my salt bay on, give me a little pinch of salt, just a little bit, mm -mm. boom. And the cool thing about mushrooms is that as they're shrinking up too, you know they're just soaking up all this flavor. So people that say, I don't like mushrooms, I'm like, yo man, mushrooms are like flavor bombs. They make your mouth water, it's that umami factor. More love to mushrooms this year. Now we're gonna try to create a little bit of a thick gravy here. We're gonna add in a little bit of flour. I'm gonna give this a quick toss first. Then we're gonna add in about a cup of our chicken broth. And what you'll see here, you're gonna still deglaze, but you see now the chicken broth is really cloudy and that's because it's turning into that gravy that we want. I'm also gonna add in a little bit of Dijon And just keep stirring, keep stirring. And this is looking beautiful. All right, now let's begin to bring everything together. In goes our chicken broth. Reserve some, then grab yourself the egg noodles, sprinkle those on, and then pour in the rest of that broth. And the noodles are going to absorb all of this liquid that's now like a gravy. So we're gonna bring it to a light simmer and you can see right here inside that the little light simmer going. That's just about right. And then we're gonna cover and cook this for about seven minutes. Oh my gosh, I stirred these once. Oof, they are looking good. Always check your noodles. And if you're thinking like, Kev, it's looking a little watery, what am I gonna do? Don't worry, I got you. Remember that it's gonna thicken up as it cools, but also it's gonna thicken up because we're going to add in our Greek yogurt now. Greek yogurt is really high in protein and it's really, really, really thick. And look at this. It looks like I added cheese, but I have not at all. And this is our swap for sour cream. Last bit of work, we're gonna add in our chicken. Well, you can't be here to smell it, but I'm just gonna describe it. We need that smell-o-vision from Willy Wonka. So I'm gonna plate it right here and finish it off with some fresh parsley. You like some other chicken? Try this chicken stroganoff. You're seeing it first here today and then today all day kitchen. I'm just gonna hit it with some fresh black pepper. Ooh, look at that. I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited about eating. Here we go. Get a little bit of mushroom, a little bit of noodle, and then some of this succulent, lean chicken breast. Oh my God. Mm. Yeah, this will make you get happy in church. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> I guarantee your friends and family are going to love this dish.
on Staten Island, so I can't even tell you how many pasta dishes I've eaten over the years. One of my absolute favorites is penne alla vodka. So today, I'm giving that beautiful pink sauce a vegan makeover. And I'm putting a little twist on that penne too. Let's get started with the crunchy breadcrumb topping. So first, I'm gonna get a small skillet over medium low heat, and we're gonna add in a little bit of olive oil. So for our breadcrumbs, we're gonna use panko breadcrumbs. I love using panko because it's extra crunchy and it's plain, so we can add anything to it and really manipulate those flavors. And the way we're gonna do that is by adding some red chili flakes because we want this spicy and a little bit of nutmeg to really round out those flavors and add that earthy component. A little bit of kosher salt and a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. And just we're gonna cook this over medium low until it gets a nice golden brown color. So we're essentially just toasting it in the pan. This usually takes about five minutes to get nice and golden and crispy. This is a test. If it loosely moves in the pan, that means it's ready. So to start off any good sauce, you have to start off with your aromatics. We're gonna start with one medium white onion and some garlic. So we just wanna get a small dice on this. And next up, garlic. We're using about four cloves of garlic. I just like to give them a light crush to help me with the chopping process. Another great way to prep all of this is actually just blitzing it up in a food processor. Just putting it on chop and giving it a few pulses and it'll all be roughly chopped. So you wanna start off with a really large pan and get it over medium high heat. To this, we're gonna add a layer of olive oil and we're also gonna add in one tablespoon of vegan butter. Traditional vodka sauce is so indulgent and creamy, so we're gonna add a few vegan options to help bring that creaminess to the sauce. So now that our oil is hot and the butter is sizzling, let's go in with our onion and garlic. You also wanna get some salt in at this point because that's gonna help the onions sweat out all of their moisture. Now, I said this was spicy vodka sauce, so now come in our spicy elements. We're gonna add some red chili flakes, but let's not stop there. We're gonna add in one of my favorite chili peppers, Calabrian chilies. And I just so happen to be wearing chili earrings to celebrate the occasion. So we wanna cook these for about five minutes until the onions are sweating and almost translucent. So now let's go in with our tomato paste. The tomato paste is gonna add basically a really concentrated tomato flavor. So it's gonna feel like we've been cooking this sauce all day, but really, we haven't been. So get this incorporated into the onions. So, the star of the show, some vodka. No, this is not a shot for me. This is for the pasta, maybe that'll be later. So once we add the vodka in, all of that alcohol is gonna evaporate, so you don't have to worry about any alcohol actually being in there, but the flavor of the vodka will become concentrated, which is what adds that unique flavor to vodka sauce, which I happen to love. We're gonna go in with some crushed tomatoes. We're gonna go in with a little sugar. Now, don't hate on this. This is really gonna help balance the flavors again. There's a lot of acidity in the tomatoes, and then we also have a lot of spice, so the sugar is gonna help round everything out. As well as some dried oregano. So I actually like to take this and rub it in between my fingers to get the oils in the oregano activated. We want our spicy vodka sauce to be smooth and silky, and in order to achieve that, we're gonna use an immersion blender. This looks great, look how vibrant that is. It really is starting to look like vodka sauce. So now we're gonna add a few dairy elements to our sauce. We're gonna add a little bit of vegan creamer, as well as some vegan cream cheese. So you wanna make sure to incorporate all of that in. 
and you can see the color is this beautiful light orange vodka sauce color. We're gonna add in one whole sprig of fresh basil. Right in, and we're gonna let that simmer with the sauce. Okay, let's check in our pasta water. Oh, it's boiling. Before we do anything, we always wanna salt our pasta water. And now for our pasta. I just wanna show you guys how fun this is. So this is called a colony Pompeii. I think colony means column, and Pompeii is obviously a city in Italy. But to me, it's just a beautiful large fusilli, and it looks delicious to eat. So we're gonna get these in. This pasta is so big, it takes about 10 or 12 minutes to cook. So I'm gonna start cleaning up and get everything out of the way and get ready to plate. Our pasta looks ready, so let's add it into our vodka sauce. Beautiful. This is so fun. Look at these swirls. And this is liquid gold. This is our starchy, salted water. So we're actually gonna add a little ladle into our pasta to make it even silkier. make sure to gently combine this with the sauce because we don't want to break up our beautiful giant swirls of pasta. Look how fun this looks. I'm so excited to eat it, but we can't forget about our spicy, crunchy red crumb topping. So it's now completely cooled, so we can just use our hands to garnish it as if we were garnishing it with Parmesan. And then if we want to be extra fancy, we can add a little sprig of fresh basil. Okay, I've waited long enough, so we're now ready to dig in. I'm so excited to eat this shape. I feel like the proper way is from the bottom. Wow, I think Staten Island would be proud. This is so delicious and so fun. Look at that. Chef's kiss. This is delicious. Hi there, happy Thursday. Who's ready for more cold and more snow? Al raised his hand uh, <laughs> because they're on tap for millions all across the country. Good morning. It is January the 18th. This is today. You didn't wait. Wild winter weather, a new storm on the move this morning, dumping a dangerous mix of snow, ice, and rain from coast to coast. 